everybody to the St. Sad Cosmocast. I am Central Eagle. I am not alone here. I have Common Writer Furry. You are alone. I'm just a voice in your head. Oh no! <laughs> ah! and, no, and, I'm just kidding. Van Haas isn't, but I am. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna, I was gonna ask. Like, well, uh, hopefully, some. Hopefully, this guy's alive. We also have Van Haas. Hi, everybody. Who are you talking to, Ramses? <laughs> Gaslight him. Oh god! Oh, my We're god. a girl boss this whole episode. <laughs> Oh my god, we got we got some we we have a, we kind of have an interesting show this week. Um, we have we have our usual we have some news to discuss. We have we have our um we we have a little a mini like I want to say a huge topic, but it's something like like something really cool that we're gonna try out for this topic this week. And we also have an episode discussion. We're going back to the class. We're back. We're back. We're, back, we're out of the we're out of the CGI hell, and now we're back to the main series, baby. Let's go. I'm so thankful. I, I, it didn't dawn on me until I sat on and watched them that I was like, "Wow, this is this is what I actually signed up for." <laughs> well, it, it, I have some th- I have some notes right here when we get to it. So it's like it's like, it's kind of weird. Also, too, it's like I also have like a mini rant that I need to get that I need to like say before we before when we get to the actual episodes because it, it involves access to to the show in general and how we should have like the show. Like Toy needs to get off their asses and actually make this show officially available. Yeah, they. No, we'll we'll get into it, but that's a lot of money to invest in something that was on a platform for less than a year. So. Yeah, but we'll get to it. that. We'll get to we'll get to that because like there's something that happened. When, there's something that happened that led to a very 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 interesting situation. When we were, as I was watching, and also seeing the cover writer furry. Because you're you're just gonna you're gonna like look at abject horror when you when you figure out what happened. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, per usual, but you know, always as always, if I have something to announce, like you know, community wise and stuff like that, or uh, I always tend to put it at the top of the show. Um, we've been noticing a lot of things lately on social media, especially with Twitter, that things, depending on where you look at, things could either go either way at this at the present moment, either good or bad. So, as a precautionary measure, what we are starting, what we did is we have a we have a, a Discord available. For a Saturday morning squadron, and now we we retrofitted that um that that um, Discord to not only accommodate that show, but also going going forward also the Saint the Saint Seiya Cosmo cast and for something else that we're announcing later. And you may have already if you are following me on Twitter, you may have already figured out what that other show is, but that other show will be part of that 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 uh, that Discord as well, and it will be linked into in the description if you want to join. Um. I reason why I said it's like you know if things if things inevitably get even worse and things just can't like and things just become uh, just 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 be end up being even more of a tire fire. I I we, we at least at least have a, like at least a place where we can convene at least and have like and get the community there in there. So if you're have if you're a listener, avid listener, and want to participate with us more and talk to us more, and also there's other there's other things that that, that are there too that you can check out as well. We'll leave a link there in the description for that Discord. Um, we also are opening up a Google Hangout because that's the best. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody <laughs> uses Google Plus. Oh, does, does Google do they even, does Google Plus even does it even exist out nowadays? I'm I'm sure a skeleton of it, kind of like MySpace, is out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, it, has, be, it, it probably has like three skeletons. people. On. <laughs> Those really hey, dedicated three people. But but that means that we could go in there and easily be top three on Google Plus if we just we gotta swoop in while the while it's hot. <laughs> well yeah, we'll like we'll, we'll, we'll figure things we'll they'll we'll figure that when we when we, have, when we got time. All right. So <laughs> first things first, let's go into the news here. And we're gonna and this is kind of well I wouldn't say this is oh yeah, we'll, we'll say right now that for the for the most part, this is our only bit of news that we have here. Um Toy announced that they're um I had they they had like their big uh, they had their big thing for third quarter 2023 about like the you know earnings and stuff like that and they said that um that they they kind of already have like not a, they kind of have a soft date for the Saints for the Knights of the Zodiac movie um it just it kind of looks like it's gonna be 2023 but I'm how I'm how I'm gonna say how I how I'm gonna put this in because like I have something interesting I want to do with you guys is like you know I predict it's gonna be either between 2023 proper and March of 2024, when their fiscal year ends. So, it's some, I'm predicting between January of next year to to uh, March of next of 2024. That's when we're gonna maybe get the movie. This is also pending the fact, of, like you know, movies. You know, 
they just we all know in the industry it's like sometimes sometimes like the delays will happen delays might be inevitable we may we don't know just yet and you know there's also other variables as well that we don't know either so you know hey that, that's that's just the, that's just how hollywood works so before the show i gave you guys kind of like a proposition and i'll post this i'll post this on our this and i'll post this on our show notes as well i like to call this doomsday bet 2020 so gentlemen you all read the rules right here i'll read the rules out here to, to you guys as, i'll read out the rules to those who don't have access to the to, to our file but if you if you if you do you can read along if not i'll say it out loud so in 2000, so we have kind of like, uh, I have a bet with you guys. The bet is two bets. When do you think we're going to get the teaser trailer? And when do you guys think the actual movie is going to come out? Uh, so our bet is this. Whoever gets it the closest to, to being correct will win. And the person that, okay, so we're, we're, we're divided into two, into, two, um, into two bets. The first bet is for the teaser trailer. And the second bet is for the actual release date of the movie. And you obviously, when you get when you have a release date for the movie, uh, if, usually if you have a teaser trailer, that means that there's also going to be a there's also going to be a date attached to the movie itself. So that's why we have both of them at the same time. Uh, so my my so what's going to happen is for the first bet, the bet is this: whoever gets closest to to, to getting it right will will have like the two other people that loses must read Sailor Moon versus Los Caballeros del Zodiaco, an Argentinian bootleg comic book. And we have to, re- and the losing team must review it. The winner, the winner will be exempt from it. And the second, the second bet is something I'm going to put up to the community as to what we can do next. It, it can be anything you guys want. It's with uh, anything within like legal, within a, like well, a re- and within a reasonable and legal sense. Also, I want, just to, just so we won't um, get into trouble later with like betting and stuff like that. Mon- monetary things are out, like we want. I want to keep away from like monetary stuff as well. So if the community has any 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 good ideas they want to propose, would you, you know put on, you know go on a Discord and just say something about it. Hop on uh, you know say something on our Twitter, say something. Everywhere. You can flag me down on, on on social media. Flag me down and we can and we can discuss it. So uh, you guys were cool about it, right? Hopefully, I am. Yes. Let's do this. <laughs> I need to win this though. I don't want to read that again. <laughs> oh God! Again? Okay. Okay. It's- it's one of those things that you when you once you find it, you just have to know what the hell it is about. And I'm I'm glad that I've forgotten most of it. Good, good, good. All right. So because Comrade Ferrari was 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 trying to was trying to game the system like behind my back. Comrade <laughs> Furry. When <sighs> when do you think the trailer is gonna when do you think the teaser trailer is going to drop? Well, this is hard because the last time I looked forward to a movie from Sony. Um, it was in production hell for like four or five years. So very terrified that that's going to happen here. Um, shout out to the four people that watched The New Mutants. I was one of those four people. Good movie. Um, but man, I don't know. That was, figure, a, that, uh, was a, that was that um, that was was 20th Century Fox. Isn't this Fox too? No. This no. is Sony. Oh, this is Sony. Okay, never mind. Then I made that up. <laughs> Wait, are you sure? It was Fox. Yes. Never mind. What was the? There was something from Sony that got really delayed too, wasn't there? A lot of movies did, uh, but the, a lot of it was also pandemic reasons. Well, as well that yeah. they had to that they had to delay it. One of the ones, one of the biggest ones they had to do, like delay a lot that they did was uh, was Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh, I don't care about Ghostbusters. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say that we'll get the teaser trailer in like. I'm gonna go ahead and say March of 2023. Okay. Pecas, your when do you think we're gonna get the teaser trailer? I'll go with May 2023. I will say February 2023 because we already got the footage already set. That only need, like they can just they can split, they can they can shit out they can shit out some 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 graphic they can shit out some um some special effects and put it out there and and damn you know you're you're um you're all set. And also too, it would benefit them because it would be like at a time when there's some ten pole movies they can put up. Like um, my Ant Man will watch Quantum Media, so they can attach it to that, and they can you know get a lot more people's attention from it. So now comes the important question: When do you guys think the movie's gonna be released? I think that they'll probably try to get it as close as to the end date for that, or at least that would be my bet, considering that uh, we haven't really ha- had just the behind the scenes looks. And from what I heard last time, and one of the speculations as to why we didn't get a teaser but during the, the Comic Con panel was the fact that the BGA, well, the BFX industry was like super 
had a lot of problems both in terms of like too much work and the, the whole like people seeing that they were being exploded etc etc so i would say september okay that's not a bad that's not a, that's a really good choice all right furry when do you think the movie's gonna come out i have a feeling that they're going to i don't know because there's two thoughts in my head there's e either they're not gonna have a lot of faith in this and dump it in like february which is a not great time for a movie or they're going to try and, and put it up against some heavy hitters in like november mm -hmm. i'm i'm gonna say november i guess for 2023 all right for me i look at it like i'm looking at it from like two perspectives the first perspective is that you know they have they right now right now toy is having somewhat some success in on oh, that toy um sony is having somewhat some success by releasing some of their anime movies Kind of programming during like off period. Dragon Ball Superheroes, they did it, they released that in um they released that in August. And it did and it's been doing really well. That it did really well for itself being an August movie, but then again, it's Dragon Ball. You know, like most 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 people most kids know what Dragon Ball is for the most part. So we not have to so like so it it kind of helped that it was like a lot of name brand, name brand recognition and there was nothing really up against it. Recently, we had one piece um film red. And that was released. Um, that was actually released on on um, November. That was released November fourth. Um, they. Uh, it's interesting because November fourth is still kind of dead. And what and what I find interesting is that they didn't want to compete against. Um, that they, they they went kind of uncontested again. Uh, there was like no real major release because the the next week, the following week, would be a major release with um with Black Panther. So despite it doing despite despite it being second place, it did really well for itself in the box office so far. Because it's still, it's still, it's still got, it's still got beat by, um, by Black, by Black Adam. So my prediction is, it's gonna be October twenty twenty three. Simply put, because they want to put something they can, they can counter program and put, like, have a lot more people watching the movie as well. I don't know. That's when Monster High, the movie number two, is coming out, and I, I don't know, man. That's is that, is that coming out in the theaters, or is that coming out to like, <laughs> is that coming out to Paramount Plus? It's coming to Paramount Plus. Exactly. <laughs> I was just making a joke. Cause <laughs> okay, no, I, actually, that, that's a actually you brought up a good point. I, I, I'm I'm gonna have to like tweak the rules just a bit because like we, we could be in a situation where like who are like it could be a situation where like like someone could pay the highest the highest number and put that on like a streaming service as well. So who knows really? So uh, Sony is Sony partnered with anybody? A lot of people for streaming. A lot of people are. They're, they're partnered mean, with the, them. but they're not partnered with it. Not like how. Uh, like Paramount and uh, Warner has the um... their own dedicated services. Yeah. Um. No. I mean, like I said, they kind of like work for hire, and if they can like if they can like front the money, they'll put it up. I know for exact like for example, um, Hotel Transylvania that was a, that was a Sony that was a Sony Pictures um property, and I then like um and and um, Amazon just like said, hey, we'll put we'll put up this much money and and like if you give, we give you this much money, let us put the let us put the thing on streaming. And like okay, and I know yeah. a few other movies. I know a few other movies that Sony has made over the years too, like Mitch, the Mitchell versus the Machines. That was a movie that that was Sony made, but the but Netflix got the rights to it and they just put it out on their service. So it's like it's whoever can get who can who can throw the money out first. Yeah, I just I I know that um, well. HBO Max does it more than really anybody else does, but the whole like streaming and in theaters at the same time, or like streaming two weeks after it's on theaters, I think is what Paramount Plus does. So yeah, I didn't know if, I didn't know if Sony worked with anybody like that. No, and like I said, like they they don't have their own proprietary ser proprietary service, but they do like they do actually like one it's one of the things that they do well is they 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 know how to they know how to sell it to like other people to other places. Mm -hmm. So. Again, I'll 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 fix up that, provi that that those provisions when the when the show's over. But I did I didn't I, that didn't that didn't occur to me till like right now that that can that is a possibility. But like I said to you, like I'm very sure because of how the market is, it, there's it's gonna get some release somewhere. I don't know where. Most likely it's gonna get. And most likely it's gonna happen in China because that's that's where a huge majority of Saint Seiya like stuff is happening. Like that's a huge where the upswing of Saint Seiya um of things are happening in, in China. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to take advantage of that. In, like, if they want to do it, take advantage and put out the movie and, like, and release it in China. But I'm also pretty sure, too, they're like, okay, look, we don't have much faith in this movie say, here in the United States. No, maybe, maybe where if they want to put in a couple of thousand dollars, you know, maybe, maybe that, that can cover our asses and maybe at least, at least get it out there, at least. 
Okay, so here's what we do. We do our, our best to become super famous over the course of the next 12 months so that we can be invited to the premiere. Go. Go, team. All right. All right. So what, do you think of that, what do you think of that idea, Bechus? <laughs> I, think, I, would think, I think that it would be amazing, especially since rumors, uh, and I, I can clarify this, are just rumors say that the premiere might be in Mexico. <laughs> Ooh. That would make a lot more sense to me than China. Well, I, I well, I can I... see either, but but I I think after the crazy success of the symphony, I'm hoping that Toei is finally like, oh, you, people in in Mexico and South America can give a shit about this property. <laughs> It it would it it would be the smartest thing to do in the sense that for example if you I'm just basing this on the Twitter account for the for the movie like the official one like uh, uh, like ninety people ninety percent of the people that actually respond to their post I think they're from Latin American countries so it would be probably in their best interest since it's probably the audience that at the very least it's the most vocal about it not saying the most passionate but the most mm -hmm. vocal about it certainly is from Latin America. It will also be logical to do it in China, considering that it is also like the. I'm not sure that if it's like the the territory outside of Japan where the the series had like the biggest impact before like coming here. It's still super big in China. I mean, there's a reason for why mm -hmm. most of the toys, most of the of the games, and and the new projects are coming from there. So, and I would think that releasing it in China, like I don't know, I know that it is not a simple releasing a movie in China. That there are a lot of restrictions. But I think that Sensei has always been a property that has been able to, how to put it, bypass all those restrictions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that if they release it in China and there are no issues that they see with it, it would be the best thing for the movie itself because it would probably be the the market that would make the most, the more, the more, uh, it would well, gather the, the, the more money. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say, sorry. Uh, it would gather the more money and therefore uh, green light the next project. So hopefully that's what happens. Anyways, uh, who knows? Like, I, I just said that because rumors are, are, are saying like that, right? And, and I'd love for that to be true. I don't know. Regardless, yes, let's be famous and go to the premiere. Yeah. Well, it, it's, oh. it's also, it's hard to gauge reactions of how popular things are in China as a Westerner because they have completely different sets of, like, social media. Like, I think Twitter is, like, kind of big over there, but for the most part, they have their own, like, region-specific social media that they use. So yeah, it's, well, it's we don't want to see what kind of impact the, the their fandoms have on things. Yeah, yeah, that and that's I think that's the biggest problem too. Is like you know to, to gauge a lot of that stuff is going to be kind of difficult because like they have like like you said, Twitter is somewhat, but they're but because of like you know things like because of issues there in China, it, it it's kind of it's kind of walled off, so we won't have like access to a lot of that kind of that kind of information. Well, I do know for a fact what what happens a lot of times is like you know I've noticed a, a like a sudden up I noticed a sudden upswing especially with since the since Saint Seiya Awakening I do believe it's a very popular game in China so a combination of the series being really popular and Saint Seiya Awakening being this incredible game for and this incredibly well well done game for them it's it's it, it's a uh, it's so uh, they they um. I, I wouldn't be surprised if like they're, they're going to use that momentum and do and do something with it in China with because of that again. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't know. We don't have all of those details just yet. And like, and like I said, when 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 things are said and done, then you know we'll get more more of that information. Um, overall, any other any other thoughts on on this bit of news about the about the uh, about toys like toys release uh, soft release of the movie? Uh, Bekas. Uh, I'm still kind of nervous. I mean, we already kind of know how, what the outline of the plot is going to be. It's going to be a, a weird combination of uh, the plot of the first season of the CGI show and adapted to live action, uh, combined with uh, a lot more action elements. So I'm kind of interested to see how that will turn out. Hopefully the release date, hope, the only thing that I can say is because I don't really know too much about the movie industry, but I do know that there are a lot of factors outside of the movie itself that can lead to its uh, downfall. And considering that they're seeing this as a multi-project or a multi-film uh, project, they, they need to make the money in order to be able to make those other those other films. So I just hope that they are competent enough to see all those details out and plan it for the best possible release. My logic would be that they, they would have to push this very hard for the, let's say, the casual audience as an action film. I think that's the most, uh, that's the best way that the movie can succeed. More than trying to gather the friends of the, the fans of the franchise i think that it really needs to 
to cement itself as an action movie. It's, and from what I've seen of the of the action, like from Andy Chang and from the choreography we saw in the in the in the behind the scenes video, it could very well be like the hit action movie of the year. Because there, I, as far as I know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but there haven't really been like good action films, like outside of superhero films and stuff like that. There really haven't been like good old traditional like uh, live action fighting martial arts films recently. So it could very well take that spot if they play their cards right that's what i'm hoping for anyway yeah and you are correct on that because like um we did have a lot of like we'd like to say franchise movies and well this is technically a franchise but in terms of like you know a hand-to-hand -hand combat type of thing the only other one i can think of right now would be something like um john wick but like thanks to the pandemic and all that stuff like like the space between between those releases of movies are, are has been like drastically like increased so we haven't seen like, like those those kinds of movies for like the last couple of years thanks to the pandemic. So it is going to be something. It's going to be kind of refreshing to see that kind of that kind of movie released, like you know, in the like the like you know after after so long of not having that kind of movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Conrad Frey, your final thoughts on like all on, on like the soft on the soft date of the Saint Seiya live action. Um. I just I don't know. I. Part of me is really excited because I like I, I think I've said it a hundred times by this point. I like seeing other people's interpretations of stuff, but knowing that it's gonna have some key tie-in points such as the name changes and some of the plot changes from the CGI show, and I already kind of just have I wouldn't say an overwhelmingly negative feeling towards the changes, but like at best I didn't mind the changes. At worst I hated the changes, like depending on which specific ones they were. Like, there weren't a lot of things that they, original ideas they brought to the table that I just thought were, like, fantastic and enriched the series. So knowing that that's kind of the direction that they're, like, latching onto makes me nervous. On top of the fact that Hollywood just had a really bad track record with adapting Japanese anime into film. Mm -hmm. I Unless you want to count Detective Pikachu, which really was based off of a video game, I guess, because Pokemon has an anime. So unless you want to count Detective Pikachu, I can't think of an anime Hollywood movie that has seen success or even been able to properly translate the 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 feeling of those shows to live action. So I'm, I'm just nervous, I guess is what I'm going to say. Optimistically nervous. Um, I think like the only other one I can think of on the top of my head would be Battle Angel Evita. I haven't got to watch that one yet. It's actually really good. But then I think I think but then again too, I think that's less less attributed to the fact that it's it's more attributed to the fact too, it's like it's Robert Rodriguez and he hardly makes any any kind of bad movie in my opinion. <laughs> oh that was Rodriguez, that explains it. Yeah. So I mean, it's like after after Death Note, I've lost all faith in Hollywood to make a I don't blame adaptation. you. I don't blame you. I don't blame you whatsoever. I tried I so hard to like that, but when he screamed like a little girl when he saw Rook, like I was I was out. I was out of five thousand. <laughs> oh God. All right. Gives me an idea for something now. <laughs> no, no. If you if it no, I don't like that I just I just told you something that makes me miserable and you got an idea from that. I know, but you made but you also made me watch <laughs> Tekken. Oh no. I didn't I I <laughs> yeah, if we want to get technical, Rob was the one that solidified that. That's true. That's true. That's I was blaming on Rob. Okay. All right. <laughs> All righty. All righty. You know, other than tossing people underneath the bus <laughs> aside. Rob's um, going to message you here a bit and be like, man, my back hurts. What happened? He'll be like, sorry, that, <laughs> that bus must have done some damage. Um, just, I'll give my quick thoughts here. Um, I, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with a lot of you guys. I'm cautiously optimistic. It's gonna be really interesting to see what, what kind of like, what kind of movie we're gonna get. Uh, so far, so far, we've only seen the behind the scenes stuff, and um, I just, I just want to see more. And the thing is, like, like the, well, from the little we've seen, like, it's hard to really gauge what, what, what kind of movie it is. So I'm going out there being optimistic, but also very, being very cautious. So for me, I, I'm like, I, I'm really happy that they're, they're putting in effort, but I'm also kind of concerned too. It's like you know. I'm looking at this from a different kind of perspective. You guys are seeing it from like like the actual film. I'm trying to look at it from like, will this like you know resonate with American audio, uh, like you American uh, United States people in the United States? Will it, it resonate with them if it gets a release here in the United States? And the thing is like, and Rick has brought up a good point. It's like if you try to promote it not as like an anime film, but as like a, like a, like a martial arts film or something like something in, in that in that vein, I think it can get a lot of people, a lot more people attention than saying it's based on an anime. So I think that would be I think that would be a huge benefit, especially here in the United States where Saint Seiya 
It's it, it the, the, the the it always feels like it's always a, a, like Saint Seiya is like the syphilis rock. It always like, it's always trying to climb it, and it's always and it's always coming back down. The, the, and it's always coming back down. And he has to come, has to come back down all over again. It's just a weird thing because, like, yeah, it's like it's not unknown in the U.S. the franchise, but it it is almost unknown. You know, like sometimes I, I look for comments or I try to look like reactions of people, and and like whenever I find like English speaking people referencing the series, most of them haven't even heard of the series, so it's kind of like hmm, it is a difficult spot to get out of. Mm-hmm. All right, Ian. Oh, uh, so yeah, that sounds that sounds interesting. Um, that sounds okay. All right, so let's move on to our let's so let's move on to our topic here. Because you proposed a really interesting topic about like what class are we? Do, did we really enjoy and stuff like that? I believe. Uh, yeah, like you know what our what our favorite what our favorite class designs are. And I said I wanted to give you guys. And I said before the show I wanted to give you guys a, a, like a little a little like um a little thing as well to like to, to keep this in mind. Obviously, we all have our class. We can all we all y'all love how the different class look, and that's just a class with like the. He also said like the, the the scales and the sculptors as well, so it's like it's it's like it's any it's any armor from Saint Seiya that you want to discuss. Here is my proposition for you guys, so we can make so I can spice things up, especially to those who are following the show, like how how I hopefully attend to what people are watching the show and people watching the show with us. Obviously, we only made obviously if we're if we're watching the if we're going to what we've only seen so far, we have only seen the Silver Saints and six of the and six of the. Six of the gold saints and uh, and the bronze saints from those from the that black saints <laughs> and those guys too and the black saints that are the best ones. Wow, Ramses, I I didn't know I didn't know you felt that way. <laughs> well, also the steel saints as well. Like we gotta talk about those. We gotta talk about those guys. As no, well. we don't have to talk about them. We absolutely do not. <laughs> <laughs> so my proposition to you guys is: well, that idea is good, but let, 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 let's let's um, let's give ourselves a little bit of a but let, let, let's see how how far we can get with a, with that kind of a kneecap. So anything is game between the CGI series, the current the the current the, the original series, and just because just, just because like you know I think I think because like some of the some of the designs are right because like it does kind of tangentially go there as well the manga designs as well. So mm. up to this up to this point up to this point where we are in the series. So we're at the house of. We're at, we're at the house of, of Leo. We've also already seen. Also, we've already seen. Um, we already seen. We already seen Virgo, and we also seen. Um, we we also we've also seen um, uh, Scorpio. So between the, from from that point to all the way to the beginning, what are you guys' favorite cloth designs? Kind of right for you. You're up first. Can I include Legend of Sanctuary since we re- reviewed that as well? Yeah, but again, like my 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 like my provision is. Like nothing beyond nothing beyond like Scorpio. Okay, so I I really like uh, Leo and Aldebaran a lot. Um, I I like their cloths more in Legend of Sanctuary. Um, I don't feel like the CGI versions of them did a whole lot. I, I feel like Legend of Sanctuary took more risk with the design by far co- when compared to the CGI ones. The CGI ones look fine. Um, I don't. Nobody come for me, by the way. But I absolutely hate the anime design for Leo, and it's because that like the the two different tones of gold look really gross together, and I really don't like it. Um, but I feel like in Legend of Sanctuary they rectified a lot of that and made him look like a daddy, and I love him. <laughs> and he like I just I think all the armors from that look good, but those are my two favorites. Uh, if we're talking about the anime though, from what we've done, obviously the Black Saints are my favorite. I I just I like the. I, I, I like that they're just all monochromatic. I've always liked monochromatic color screens. I like, you know, black as like a base color for everything. And I like how they just made absolutely no sense. And we're probably the worst villains of all time. And I just, I, I don't know, I, something about them is just so endearing. And I already really like all five of the the base, like the, the main five. And to have them just in these like really sleek monochromatic looking skin, uh, I was gonna say skins. I've been playing Fortnite too much. <laughs> monochromatic armors just looked really cool to me. So uh, those are my favorite from the series proper that we've covered so far. Fantastic. Anything from that from that period, but from 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 Scorpio down. You actually, you've actually put quite the challenge on me because <laughs> when I had this topic in mind, I was thinking about probably all of the series in general and. Like my answer for the the 
the, my favorite Claude Cla Alvin actually goes beyond that. So if I only have to limit myself to this, it's actually this actually puts quite a challenge on me because I do like many of the Claudes that, that have appeared so far, but I've never, like, I'm not fun of any of them in, in particular, like, up to this stage. I would be between two of them. Uh, like, between the the Scorpio the Scorpio uh, gold cloth that because it's probably the one that like for for me I love it when they really represent like you you see that and you don't even have to know anything about the series and you can immediately tell that it is a scorpion right mm -hmm. and if you tell somebody that this is based on the zodiac signs and don't give him any more information beyond that they can probably figure that out right like a visual like the Kuramata was always like when he made Sinsia, he showed his genius and he showed the challenge that he input himself of trying to visually make something much more appealing and more uh, something that would catch the attention of the readers. And I think that every time he outshined himself, whenever he did a new design, the, from the gold cloths, like you could argue that the that the Gemini cloth also could be like very very well designed like because it's a concept that's very difficult like if you know the mythology and you know what gemini is supposed to represent it still leaves like quite the challenge of how the hell do i represent this as an armor right but but i think he was able to like using his own ideas and his vision for it he was able to, to do it right but i'm a bit too torn between the scorpio cloth and and i think i'm gonna go with this one here uh, the Pegasus B3 cloth of the manga, the one that he wears like up until this point in the story in the manga, because it's like a kind of intermediate phase between the, like it's kind of like a step before the 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 B4 of the manga that is the the one that most people know as the B2 in the anime, the one that he gets after the sanctuary arc. Mm. Like that's probably one of my favorite uh, favorite cloths. I just love that the Pegasus cloth that comes after this in, in the anime. I was never, I've never really liked the, the 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 helmets like that they gave them in the in the anime. Once I discovered like there there's a very interesting uh, way that it's it's fun to analyze as to what the success of the series could have been if they just had kept the original designs, because the original designs for the cloths in, in the manga were very minimalistic, extremely, extremely so. Like, you can barely recognize them once you see them, and it's like, whoa, really? Like, it was a big drastic change, but I think that it paid off uh, in the long run, because it, 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 was a, it attracted the attention of children and wanting to have the toys. But there's something about the original ones that I just like more, and I like how the the Pegasus cloth looks uh, by this point in the story in in the sanctuary arc in the manga after Mu repairs it uh, in the Aries Temple. So I'll go with that. Again, this is the reason why I put this provision because I think I wanted to get like an interesting discussion. And, you know, hey, I, I I did my job. I did as as a host. I think I did. I think I did a reasonable job by trying by doing that. Um, for me, it, it's it's uh, I'm down to like one or one or two of them. And me and me and Conrad Frey, we 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 been we've been kind of like back and forth with 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 one of them. I really like Iki's like initial like cloth he has in the manga, that like all orange cloth he has. I really I don't know why I like it. It's just I I really like the I really like I really dig the design and everything. It's like both minimalistic, but it's also like the 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 orange is really striking, and it just I just really like how that looks on him. And I know I know Furry doesn't like it because like because he likes the because the, like there's just too much of that color, I believe. Yeah, I like the purple. Uh, the the I think it's the the second form, the one where he's like almost entirely purple, the one I have the figure of. Yeah, I like that one, and I also liked his original one too, where it was kind of like a mix of purple and the brown. Mm -hmm. But the the original one, I just I guess it's because I'm just so used to like him being the like quote purple ranger you know like <laughs> they each kind of have the color that they're associated with and the anime kind of drove home that he's more purple so since that was my introduction to the show seeing him in this like uh... dark orange kind of color is very strange to me it reminds me too much of uh oh was it geki that was orange too yeah no uh was geki bon? was uh, it was bon bon yeah lion but <laughs> it was, i knew it was one of them yeah, well, don't worry. It, it, you're forgiving for forgetting about him. I mean, he only has he only had three lines of dialogue, and Kurumada cut one of them. <laughs> well, I <laughs> I played him a lot in the games because it was really interesting to see what they the, the ugh, I can't talk today to see what what they could do and what their powers were because we got to see so little of them. So it's fun to play them. Hmm. But yeah, 
but yeah, I, I really like I really like his design. I think that I think second place would go to the anime Shun's like initial design in the anime. I think like it's also it's something that's like okay, it's pink, but like it's it's it has this kind of elegance, but it's also really cool looking when when it's like when it's just standing there. So I I really enjoy that. And finally, the one that I just adore, and this is the one that like I think this will be my number one. Like regardless, it'd be the Sagittarius cloth. That's like that's oh. my favorite. Cause like yeah, we've seen that side of Trace class. So like that, I really like. Oh yeah, that one does count too. So um, but, and the thing is, it's like I really wish I can use another one because we, we didn't see how the cloth looks, but we did. But we do know that like the the Libra cloth exists. Okay, we're, you, well, we we saw the we saw it it as like it's like it object form. Yeah, it, it's object form. Yeah, and that's why I was saying it's like. And on one hand, I, I would love to put that, in, but it's like technically that's cheating. But then I get to I'm technically cheating by saying the Sagittarius one. No, because semantics. No, because he's worn it twice now, hasn't he? Because he worn it fighting Icky no. at the beginning. He didn't wear it fighting Icky. No, no he, he didn't wear it, but he protected him during he protected, his fight. With but Icky. he he did wear it against Leo, though. I remember that part because it was actually mm. a flashback of the episodes we watched today. So it's oh lord, we're gonna get to that. But yeah, um, so, so yeah, the Sagittarius cloth is like my number one, and those would be like the other ones. Like my runner ups would be the the, the manga, of, um, the, the manga of V one Iki, um, the Phoenix, and the the, the anime like um, V one of um, Jun's Andromeda cloth. Those, uh, those are those are good designs as well. Well, the V one of uh, of Shun in the anime, I don't like it. I actually like his manga design more. It's more minimalistic, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it too. It's like actually, it, 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 like, like, but it's like in, in terms of like looks and like, if like in terms of like buy me right now, buy me right now, buy this toy right now factor, the toyetic <laughs> factor, if you will. Yeah, it it it, it, it nails it perfectly. I think that's a like I don't know if you're familiar with that term, um, toyetic. Well, if if I would, so if we're going based off of like complete character concept on top of armor, because the the non main bronze knights. Are, have really simplistic armor, but I've always really liked the overall aesthetic of Hydra. I, I, but like his armor isn't very substantial. But the hair combined with his weird eyes and the big like gemstone that's on his forehead and his mohawk, like aesthetically, I love him. But the armor, if we're talking about specific armor, I mean, he's got like a weird wraparound chest piece and some panties, and that's about it. <laughs> well, and that. Well, that's a, that goes back to what Rehas was saying about the minimalistic look, I and mean, that's like you know some 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 of the, some of them retain that minimalistic look more than others in the anime. Yeah, I always found that amusing. Like when they gave uh, Ichi as well as Jabu the cock pieces. <laughs> like like I grew up watching that, so I wasn't surprised when I but I when I saw the original the the manga version, I was like, huh. Now I can't stop thinking about why the hell they decided to give uh, Jabu that particular cock piece. I don't know why. <laughs> now I cannot see him like in his anime form without thinking about the goddamn cock piece. Oh god! Uh, yes. I'm, 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 that's not gonna get out of my memory now. That, now that you mentioned it, well, it's like <laughs> once it's in your brain, it's never gonna, it's never gonna leave. Okay, I'll say this at least. At the very least, he, he doesn't have to protect about not having uh, like the attacks are dangerous, and, and the, the saint's body are still human. But at least he can still rest assured that he will have a descendancy. <laughs> Mm, very true. Gonna say, right? uh, that was going to be my question. It's like, is is his bloodline worth preserving that much? <laughs> well, uh, it's a good question. Like, uh, this is a question for the audience. Is the it's the blood of a hardcore simp worth protecting? Let us know in the comments. Or a legitimate psychopath. Like, <laughs> these are the bloodlines that need to go on. <laughs> Saving. All right. No, I'm writing on the note here. Just. <laughs> so funny not to know here. Yeah, because we want more audience, we want more audience participation. That was actually a really good we can ask them. Where does it sound? Um, so you guys wanna you guys I think I think you know I think that's I think we get pretty good answers. Like I said, we can only go so far with this discussion because like we don't haven't seen a lot of it yet. But um yeah, yeah but like, so like I said, like like it's, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be interesting as uh, when we get to like as we get to the rest of the series. You know, but you know that, that's an issue that we're gonna have in like 2025. So let's keep that in mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, at least it's something to look forward to. So we'll come back to that. And also, too, if you have any, if you have any thoughts, you know, leave leave us a question on our social medias. Leave a question on our go on our Discord and, and speak out about like what we're right or wrong. You know, hey, that, that's 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 what I I really want to encourage more participation from the fans because I like talking to fans. And I think that's the that's the lifeblood of, of a podcast where it's like if you, discussing things with. Not just between you guys, but also between the fans as well. So, hey, 
if you're if you're out there, you you know, there's very ways you can you can get a hold of us, or you can there's very ways you can participate. Please participate with us. We really would really enjoy. It. So with that said, speaking of participation, let's uh, let's go on to our main topic. Let's go on to our main topic here. We are looking at episodes 49 to 52 of Saint Seiya of uh, the original series. Um, you guys, the, the, I'm pretty sure you, I, I was going to ask you guys if you guys already watched it, but obviously you guys did. So, um, Ben Cross, why don't you open this? Why don't you think, open things up with episode 49 if you can? Already, uh, I'm actually excited about this. This is the first time that I participate in a classic uh, anime focused episode. Okay, so episode 49 begins uh, partially midway through the fight between Death Mask and uh, Shiryu at mm. the Cancer Temple. By this point, Seiya has already crossed the. He has already, well, Shiryu already stalled uh, Death Mask so that Seiya can advance and move on to the Leo Temple. Uh, the first part of the fight has already transpired, and I am trying to remember. Uh, does Shiryu meet Saori like in this episode? I think no, he did the episode before. Uh, yeah, that's, that was my question. Like, did he see them in the ep uh, Okay, so he he already got sent back. Like he, he already got sent back from the Yomotsu Hirasaka for try to fight that mess again, but was sent back to ah yes because we begin with Shunrei. We begin with Shunrei like worrying about Shiryu and worrying about his well being and starting to pray for him. And that's when Shiryu's soul, uh, hearing her pleas, wakes up and realizes that he has sent, he has been sent back again. Uh, realizes this, and then Death Mask starts to listen to Shunrei's pleas, uh, and that's when he decides to go and fight Shiryu uh, to to ensure that he doesn't return this time. But mm -hmm. before that, but before that, we get a, a flashback from Shiryu of his time when he got, when he just arrived to to Lushan and to be trained by Doko where he meets uh, Shinrei and they rebuild a little bit about the the, backs, the the backstory of each of them, which I thought was really nice because I, I think that at this point she was probably, even though we did know a bit of, a, a bit of his past and a bit of his training and uh, we had seen flashbacks of him, we hadn't really seen like what happened to him like after the Grad Foundation sent him to train. And we actually got to see a, a montage, a classic montage of his training, which is actually something that I wanted to discuss you, with you guys because rewatching this, I actually rewatched all the episodes today for for the discussion. And I, the thing that I noticed is, first of all, like it's a very good montage. The the, the music use, which is a direction of heated battles and showing how how Doko trains Shiryu. I th my first initial thoughts was that. I think that Chu was probably the one that had the most benign training of, out of all the five protagonists. Because, I mean, the, the training for becoming a saint has been established both in the anime as well as in the manga. That it is a very hellish training that barely few people are actually able to, to do. Like, mm -hmm. many die in the process. Mm -hmm. And we have seen the past of, I think, most of the characters with the exception of Shun by this point. Uh, and all their trainings were hell, basically. Well, I think you, you can probably... The, the digress that about Hyoga, I mean, his master in the anime, like, the crystal sink was also very benign. Uh, I was thinking about Camus in the manga, but anyways. Uh, it, when you compare the, the, the trainings of the five of them, we know that the one that probably had the worst is Isiki, but mm -hmm. all, all of them went through hellish training, but I think that Shiryu's was probably the most traditional, like, a very wise uh, old master that trains him with a, a strict but caring uh, affection. Like, there, you can tell that there is, like, affection between... The, in, in his relationship between Doko and, and Shiryu, which is something that, like, y you can also see that that affection between Seiya and Marin, but also there's a bit of more distance be because of the kind of training that he had with her. Uh, Iki obviously is out of the question. Mm -hmm. uh, Yoga also, like, the, the Crystal Saint was, like, kind, but he was also very strict. I don't know, the, the thought that popped in my head is that Shiryu probably had the most traditional training that you would expect to see from an action movie. Out of all the protagonists, yeah, it, you 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 bring up a good point. It's like, yeah, it feel it feels like it feels like Shiryu's training was like a lot more in line with like something like like a like a like a kung fu movie or like you know a martial arts movie where you know it's like, where where everybody else kind of had like different kinds of training. You know, Seiya had like the more traditional training that uh, you would think a saint would have because because of the kind of combat he has. Iki, well, and you know, with with um, Depending on what and what story you, you depending on what story you choose to, to accept for Shun, it's like either he either the either he had like a really weird training where it's like, by the way, we're gonna we're gonna strap you here to this rock, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> or uh or, or the more traditional one he had with he had where he had it in, in a manga. 
And like I said, like also depending on what you and where you where you stand on, on the on continuity with with uh, with, uh, with with yoga as well. It's kind of it's kind of on iffy ground as well. But um, for the most part, like you know, yeah, you're you're correct. And I wrote down here in my notes. I forgot, and maybe and I'm gonna take a word from from Comrade Furry's um, dictionary. Uh oh. Because I, I think the I think the CGI brain rot got to me. And I wrote down I forgot how I forgot how important Shunwei was in this series compared to the CGI show. Yes. The her praying and being upset for for Shidiu felt natural here, where in the CGI show it's like, oh yeah, we haven't seen her for like twenty episodes. What's she doing now? Like she's pretty regularly appearing at least through this first story arc. I also wrote down here, um, Thank God Bankos was right. The music is so striking. I have the exact same note. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I miss the music so much. And then I put in there, Benhas was so right. <laughs> we, yeah. I, 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 never, I never, like I said, we, we were never making fun of you. We were never dissing you. But, you know, like if, if, there's, any, if, there's, any argument to your, if there's any argument to your rants that you would put up, it's when we start watching the actual series again that you that, that, that you're start to, that you start that, that, that your argument is actually the strongest. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Comrade Frey, any thoughts so far on, on on the actual episode, episode forty nine? Well, all I gotta say is, um, it wasn't clear who Shinrei was praying to, like what deity she's praying to, but you know, bitch found the right religion because <laughs> she she whoever she prayed to answered her prayers. So <laughs> we need to find out who she is praying to because she's got the answer to which religion's right. <laughs> That's actually That's... quite true. It's, it's very, like, very ambiguous because I think that, uh, like, in Japanese, she just says kami, but you know how in Japan, like, mm-hmm. that's very and very, very ambiguous. Mm-hmm. And in, in most of the translations, they, they translate it literally as God. I was actually checking the manga to see if they were a bit more specific, but, but they also just translate it as God as well. Like, <laughs> so it, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I also it's a catch all. I also need to say that she made like a suicide pact with God too. So like her days are numbered. Like God's gonna come for her at any moment because oh Lord, she at, at one point she said God, you know, I you know I'll give my entire life force for she to you to make sure that he lives. And then he lived, and it's like okay, girl, like he's coming for you. Gonna, gonna collect that out. debt. Well, it, it depends on what continuity he he, he doesn't succeed. <laughs> she's still, she's still very much alive and still very much doing stuff with with she to you doing stuff. <laughs> we'll get to that late. We'll get to that. When we, we'll cross that bridge when we get to Omega. Yeah, I I don't want. To. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh boy, that'll be fun. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, but yeah, but yeah, like uh, Sh- Shunrei. Ironically, now that you you mentioned that, uh, Shunrei is probably. It's funny because she's probably one of uh, like the least developed in the sense of like there's not too much to her like we know her backstory we know what her role is we know that she's she is if a childhood friend slash romantic interest even at this point it's pretty obvious at, at this stage like she's the most important person in Chiri's life because she's probably the one that made him realize that, that he could protect other people and not just himself because even he, that's one of the, the things that's amusing to me like Shiryu is always seen as, as the most novel character I don't think I don't remember if I've already said this on the show but Shiryu is my favorite character in the entire mm-hmm. franchise and in general in the in fiction like and uh, like he's the most noble out of all of them he's not the most kind necessarily that's true in the universe but uh, Shiryu is definitely the most noble out of all the saints he's the one that will sacrifice his life with us without a second thought if it means saving the lives of others or for the greater good like he blinds himself for crying out loud just to save the mm-hmm. lives of his companions in order to be able to defeat his opponent uh, and but you also like you see that when he's a child he has a bit more more a more of a selfish reason to 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 try to train to become a saint which is basically to to become powerful because when because he was an orphan and he could only fend for himself, which is very very logical and very understandable, especially at his age that he thought that way. But you can also see that precisely he thought that way, and he through his interactions with both Doko and Shunri, he becomes the character that he ends up becoming, which is the, the most novel out of all of them. And even though Shunri doesn't really do much in the sense of uh, like there aren't any like aspects of her life that happen in this story. She's probably one of the most well loved and most cared for uh, side characters, precisely because of her relationship with Shiryu. That it feels very natural, like it doesn't feel forced at all, despite it not being shown too much. At least that was my impression. Well, she's, um, 
She's also the only like childhood friend that has much of any impact on the story because June appears and disappears, Esmeralda insta dies, um, <laughs> uh, anime only orphanage Niho. girl vanishes after this arc, basically. Yeah, Miho. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the only one that exists at this point. So. And not and just that, that I, feel, I feel like, also, too, like, I feel she's, like, the most proactive out of everybody, especially in the in the anime, where, like, you know, she's actively trying to, she's actively trying to, trying to assist Shiryu after he got blind and doing all these things for him. As a matter of fact, like, the, like the whole entire, the whole entire thing with, with Oko was that, you know, that, like, you know, that she, that she was helping him out and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, speaking of which, where was Oko in that long flashback? <laughs> they forgot about him. <laughs> they, they've already forgotten about him. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's, something, I think it's something later where I was like, wait, like, this is the episode where I literally screamed, wait, that, that happened? <laughs> the life of a failure character, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, we'll get to another failure character in a little bit. I, I like how they tried to justify some filler. Uh, it was either this episode or the next episode where... Um, uh doko was talking and was just like yes you can see now because you suppressed all of your senses and it's really great that say i got that water for you i was like no that did not <laughs> like stop trying to justify it uh, yeah, that's for the next one because i actually want to dwell on that <laughs> all right uh but, go on okay i was just gonna con continue with the synopsis okay so th that happens she awakens in the yomotsu hirasaka and then that mask appears and starts attacking him and he he actually beats him and decides to throw him himself in the in the pit to the entrance of the underworld. Mm -hmm. And that's when Shunrei's phrase started to get to like Death Mask again. Which, by the way, like I think it's an established fact that Death Mask is is an asshole. Like there is no way of denying that anyway whatsoever. And I don't think anybody wants to deny that. Like some people like that, some people don't. That's a different uh, discussion. The point is that I'm trying to make is. Uh, like that mask, you don't really really think of how much of an asshole he is until you realize that, like, really, bitch? Like, is, is uh, some prayers like get on your nerves to the point of you killing an innocent <laughs> just because of just because of that? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh boy. Also, I like how he was like, "Oh, you guys are gonna see each other in hell." I was like, "What makes you think that she's going to hell? She's literally like talking to God right now. I don't think she's going to hell. Just <laughs> FYI. Like, no, yeah. again, she's found the right God to worship. She's going to heaven." Mm -hmm. Um, I, I will say this because, like, uh, I will say this because I was because I was watching the dub version of, of the series, and I gotta say right now, props to Jay Hickman who's been who voices Death Mask. He was an he was uh he was an amazing he 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 hammed it up in in all the right ways. I know I know I don't know I because I know you were messaging me about this um earlier, Conrad Frey, like you're not a big fan of of, the, of that posh accent he has, but well, I, I, I I find it I love it. I don't know I don't know why I love I love it. It just like it adds more to it adds more to his assholeness. And I wrote down here at the very beginning. He says, "Damn it, just shut up." He says, <laughs> "He says as, he, as he's as he's listening to Shundrei's prayers." And I'm saying, "This is the line. This is the line of the show." And like Death Mask, Death Mask, Death Mask's voice actor is loving every moment of being of being Death Mask. Well, my okay. So I was I had forgotten that he was like had that weird British accent. I, I so I think it shocked me more than anything. But with the plot twist that happens for specifically for you and I, uh, oh I'm lord, not sure, I'm not sure where Ben Hoss was watching, but specifically for you and I, the plot twist that happened for episode 50, nope, his voice actor in the Netflix dub is just fine. 100. Yeah. Oh lord, we'll get to that. That's that's where we're gonna that that's that's where we're gonna get to. That's where we're gonna get to some issues. Um, oh, as, oh, speaking of, can I ask a question because I actually was curious about that. Uh, I I haven't been able to see the English dub. Unfortunately, it's not available. It wasn't available in my region, and you know. Netflix gone, etc. Uh, like, did they change the voice actor for him in, in the CGI show? Or is no? Nope. Or... All all the voice actors from the CGI show were also in the original anime, for the exception of like Shun. Obviously, Shun had to like because now Shun is you know we all know what happened with, with Shun. They had they they had to, they had to change the voice actor. So I believe in the in, in for the anime, it's um, Damien Wells as uh, as Shun and um, Christina uh, uh, Christina Lichi. Is that her name? Um, uh, uh, furry. Oh, I forget. I'm really bad with names. Um. Yeah, but it's like the, she's a voice actor for Shun in the CGI show. That's the only like major change they've done. Ah, okay. Uh, well, the, yeah. Le, okay, because I do want to make a point about the the Spanish dub that that's in this episode, but that comes later. 
Oh, um, go, 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 I think, go, I mean, if you want to continue with the, with the synopsis, and you're more than welcome to. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, the, the, because what happens afterwards, right, is like he's about to throw Shiryu, he, he gets annoyed by Shunrei, and then he uses telepathy to attack her and throw her out of uh, the waterfall. And they, they, like, he presumes to have killed her, and Shiryu presumes her to be dead, and this is what awakens his rage, and then he momentarily is able to elevate his Cosmo in order to get rid of uh, Death Mask's uh, hold and they start to defend himself. And this is when where there is a line, Kevin Ryder Furry, in the Latin American dub of Saint Seiya. That's one of the most legendary lines in, in dubbing. Because like in, in the in Japanese, like after Shiryu gets uh, like he burns his end by rising his cosmo, he says something like Shiryu you or Shiryu, you, you damn so, something of, of the like, right? But in the Spanish dub, he says the famous line, Shiryu malvado, quemaste mi mano! <laughs> evil, evil. <laughs> Which translates to, Shiryu, you evil man, you burned my hand! And I think that, that adds in more, if you, if you try to add in more, with the, like, if you, like, now try to imagine that scene, but now adding that, that, po that, that posh voice, and it's like, oh my god, that would have been so perfect. <laughs> well, the the in the English dub, so like his in because I actually have a note about that scene. And the in visually, Death Mask looks terrified, but in the English dub, he sounds angry there. But, but it doesn't match his face. Like his face looks like he's scared that Shun or not Shun that Shiryu was able to burn him just with his Cosmo from holding him. Mm -hmm. And he like makes it. He like recoils and makes this like kind of scared face. But in he like yells like damn you or something like that in in the english dub and it's like you you don't look angry you look scared it's a, it's a weird thing because yeah he does look scared like if you only look at his face without any volume he does look scared but in japan he sounds more surprised than angry or or annoyed in in <laughs> in spanish he sounds like like uh, scared but also <laughs> like ridiculous and like if you say that he sounds like that in English, like it's it's weird. Like I suppose that it depends on the interpretation. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Maybe we should look at the ADV dub and see what he sounded like there. Oh no! Oh, it was probably bad. No offense, Chris Patton. Oh, no, uh, that, that was Shun's voice. Sorry. Uh huh. I was looking up who Shun's voice or Sean's voice was. It was Lucy Christian. That's why I was. Yeah, it's Lucy there. Christian. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, she's. Yeah, she's like, well, she watches Okaido in um in My Hero Academia in the English dub, so she's kind of she's just been doing a lot. She's been doing a lot, and yeah, she's the one that's voicing Shun right now in the CGI series. Um, but um, Robert Mungle was his name for ADB. Robert Mungle. Sorry, okay. sorry, Robert Mungle, whoever you are, <laughs> but you weren't. We'll get to, we'll get like anyway, we'll get to that in the next episode, but um, um. Is that is that it? Um, is that it for the synopsis? Is there any final thoughts from? Is there any other thoughts from you guys? Um, covered for um, or yeah, right. Uh, oh oh um, he says Shiryu, you brat. That's what he said. Whenever, but his face looked like he was terrified. That's what he said. Actually, I had to rewind <laughs> it and quote it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like this, this is what we were talking about. Just just as like a frame of reference for people when we were complaining about how short the CGI fights were. This fight technically takes two and a half, almost three episodes to finish. And at every moment of it, like even some of the like slower moments of it don't feel like they're dragging as much because the music is keeping you engaged and the like the dramaticness of it. And even when they're not physically fighting and it's just two dudes staring at each other, it's still really intense feeling. And that's what we were kind of nitpicking about the CGI show was that the atmosphere wasn't there and the fights... Like, we're not saying, when we say a, a fight lasts three episodes, you know, in the original anime, it's, n they're not, like, pumping fists, like, nonstop for an hour and a half or whatever, like, the, the amount of time that three episodes takes. There is a lot of pause and a lot of dialogue and stuff like that, but it's, it, it keeps the, it keeps everything kind of flowing, whereas it would, with the CGI show, it was like a two-minute fight and then instantly moving to the next plot point. So, mm -hmm. the, the music, the environment... Everything in this reminded me of why I love the show so much. Um, and they did, I, I, I don't know why, but they did like a really extensive last time on recap. And I feel like that was super helpful as well. <laughs> um, I, 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 I did write down here, too many damn, too many damn flashbacks. 
Well, but, well I'm, I'm talking about like before it shows the episode title, like where it was like talking about what happened recently. Like it went over like five episodes prior stuff. Oh. It oh, okay. Way over. It went way back with talking about like what was going on because it talked about Shun in the Gemini Temple, and I think it showed a bit of like even Saya knocking the horn off of Aldebaran. Like it went way back. So very helpful for us that for the past like four months have not covered this show. Like this I actually, show. I actually have something to say about, about that because like when you mentioned like this, it is a very helpful thing, particularly when you haven't seen in a long time either those previous episodes or. Like, even if you were watching it just in a row, like, since that happened quite a few episodes back, it makes sense for that to be there in the beginning. But one of the things that the anime, and as you mentioned, uh, Ramses, the, the show tends to do was, like, it did put quite a few flashbacks where it didn't need to just for the sake of uh, spacing out the episodes. That that comes in the next episodes. I think that the Leo ones were the worst offenders in this batch. But, <laughs> but like, it's one of those things in which sometimes it was well made and well, like, needed. Like, for, for example, for this. But other times it wasn't. It's like, bitch, I just saw the last episode. I don't need to see half the last episode right now. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's it's like, you know, like they they they... they... They flash back to an episode. They do a flashback in the episode, but they go to a flashback or that same flashback in the ne in the next episode. Whenever I see that, I cannot help but think of the comment that I think uh, Takao Koyama in an interview revealed that he apparently got yelled at constantly at Toei because of how expensive the episodes of Senseiya were to oh, make Lord. at the time. So all I can think about is is like uh, whenever they do that in the show, it's like, oh, oh I can hear the Toei's executives' voices. <laughs> like, what? you gotta save money. When you think about it, like, Saint Seiya, I mean, it, it was really commonplace back in the 80s and 90s to have, like, a bunch of recycled animation, like, uh, uh, not to not to bring it up again, but with Sailor Moon, like, you know, every episode they had their transformation sequences that ranged from 30 seconds to, like, a minute, and they had mm -hmm. their attack sequences, which, if you're going based off the last season, was, like, a 25-minute long freaking attack with her spinning around. Like, yeah. they had a lot of recycled animation, and Saint Seiya didn't have a ton of it. for They did for their attacks. But they don't use their attacks constantly. Like, like it was. It's a given in some of those other shonen shows that that recycled footage is going to be every episode, and it's not necessarily the same for Saint Seiya the way that they structure the plot. So it makes sense the flashbacks they were the, for them using it to cut down on animation budget. Like, it one hundred percent makes sense because they just didn't have as much recyclable anime. Yeah, yeah. especially back then when you had to make things like uh, like out of the blue. Like, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that like saying say I ain't free from recycling. You know? Oh no! Well, even, also, even, <laughs> even the classic anime. I mean. Well, I was gonna say like for me when I when I mentioned that to too many damn flashbacks like, again I think it's it's less that I'm annoyed by it but more like I can see the padding of like they have to they they you can totally tell that either something happened with the budget like you made like you just mentioned Minghas or they are just like okay we need to get this episode out so we need to like find a way to pad out these episodes so they can like at least get get the point across without having to animate some new things. So I think I think I think it's leaning after you after what you said right there was like I think it was more like oh shit we need to like cut some corners here not a few things a whole lot of things. You're telling me that I have to animate my animated show? What is that about? <laughs> um, but um, any uh, I guess I guess we should move on. But any final thoughts, um, us on on the episode? Yeah, it, it was amazing. It's like fantastic, especially how it ends on like Shirio just punching that mask up in the air and leaving it in a very <gasps> "what's gonna happen next" kind of situation. Like, love it. All right, Freddy. Any final thoughts? Head empty, no thoughts. Okay, that's a, that's <laughs> that's your bet. I, I I love it when I love it when you say that. That that, that tickles me. <laughs> um. So before you, I know you're gonna give us some summary on, on what's happening, comrade. Uh, for a main class because like you know. You are you are the same expert, and you know we can we always jump we always jump in whenever we have some something to say because like you know either you take better notes or you know you're you're or you know you're really more astute and you and you know you can talk about this. But let me let let me get on my soapbox here just for a few minutes here, okay? All right. Episode fifty. Um, in order to watch these episodes, me and Conrad Furry, we have to like go to a place of ill will to, to acquire these episodes. Allegedly. Allegedly, we don't. We won't say where it is or how to get them, but suffice to say that this is less. This is less. Like, this, is, this is less of a. Uh, this is less like a, a, a thing for. This is less of like a thing for pirates to, to approve piracy, and more of like, for fuck's sakes, toy, get your shit together and put this thing on a, on a service for God fucking sakes, because 
when we got to because on this particular ill gotten website, <laughs> uh, we cut from we, we we had from all up to this point we we had the Netflix dub, which is fine, which is a great dub. I like I like I love a lot of the, I love I love a lot of this dub. But when we got to episode fifty, we were we were thrusted to the ADV dub. Oh I, my fucking Christ! I one hundred percent felt like I was doing an episode of ancient anime because like. Boy, those the the mid two thousands ADV dubs are just their own animal, and it's really hard to explain because they're not bad. They're just most often really poorly cast. Like you've got these incredibly talented people, and I feel like ADV. I don't know if they just didn't have like a huge pool of talent, or if they purposely culled their their talent. But you would hear the same people in every single ADV show, like ever. Like, mm -hmm. they would just recycle the same people. And that doesn't work for every property. Like, just, like, I'm not saying that anybody, I'm not saying that Rob Mungle, calling you out, sir, is a bad voice actor. <laughs> I'm just saying that he was not good for the role of Death Mask. And it's, a lot can be said for some of the other characters in this Oh, we'll get, I have some thoughts on some, on and, some other characters. But it's, um, it's just, that's how ADV did it. They just had their, their pool of actors and they just would toss them under a role. Like maybe they did, maybe they legitimately thought this was a good idea. But I, a lot of these voices I've heard time and time again, and I feel like sometimes those voice actors really fit those characters. Sometimes they really didn't, and that's just what you get when you go into an ADV production. Yeah, and I was gonna say, like I wrote down here in my notes, wow, this dub is so off. Twenty years has done has done wonders because <laughs> yeah, twenty like and, uh, uh, like we'll hit twenty years in twenty twenty three with that dub and. The the difference is night and day when you watch the when you watch the the Netflix dub compared to the ADV dub. Like um, the ADV dub, that feels like you know I feel like a work for hire for a lot of them, and they're just as a matter of fact, there's two voice actors that 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 just made me like die inside as I'm listening to them. <laughs> I think Primary Fairy will agree with me on, on these two voice actors when we get to them. Um, but it's it's fine to say this is like I said, this is in no. Shape or form, like condone, like this is not us, like uh, like this is not us, like you know, championing piracy. Like I said, this is less, this is less, like um, this is less about piracy and more like, please, toy, if you're listening, and I hope you are. I don't want to be doing this every time for Saint Seiya. I want this to be accessible to more people and have that that dub because that dub was actually really good. I think I, I if there's one thing that if there's one thing I really applaud them. Was that not only did they get Saint Seiya, that not only did they put Saint Seiya on, on a good place, on a good place where people had access to it on Netflix at the time, but also too the dub was actually really good, and people should have more access to that, regardless of like and, and you know and like and I don't care how you're gonna get it, but you need to put that dub somewhere, and I really would appreciate if you do. I hate to like I hate to I hate to like watch these, I hate to watch this I hate to watch this ADV dub as much as because there's some things here that just like that just. I, I I died inside listening to some of these voices, like Doko's voice actor. Just oh my god! I I I don't know if I was trying to be. I don't know if this guy was trying to be offensive or not because he was trying to. Do, like, oh my god. No. But what? But before oh. we get too into the weeds, though, like I don't know. I, I just lost my train of thought. Sorry, because you threw me off with the Doko thing because that really did send me. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, but it's like it's, it's like it sounds like a. a it's the the, the the actor they got the, the actor they got to do Doko. It's like they uh, it's like they got the guy who they got a guy who sounds like he's trying to dub like a like a bad Chinese um action uh, Chinese martial arts film, film in the nineteen seventies. I'm like, no, dude, we're, we're, oh, past I, I we're, past we're past this. I remember. We're past this. We're past this. We're past this. We don't need this. For God's sakes, no, stop dub. For God's sakes, no. I I slowly started dying. Anyways, hurry. Your I, thoughts. I remembered finally what I was going to say, but uh, along the lines of, of Toei needing to get their shit together and put this on some kind of streaming service for us, even if it's like, and, and I know this might not be a popular opinion, even if they just like slap it on iTunes and charge us like $20 a season or something. I'll buy like it! That, yeah, like some way that I can have this officially, but but it, it not only is it hindering the fans that are trying to get into it, but it's hindering all these other companies that have invested in other parts of the show. Like, the movies are on Amazon. Yeah, the first couple you could probably get away with watching without knowing a ton about Saint Seiya, but eventually you're going to, like, it's going to be required for you to have knowledge from the show. The Hades arc is on Tubi to watch. You absolutely cannot go into that without without watching at least the majority of the, the TV show or having 
a pretty decent pool of knowledge of what's going on with the, what happened in the TV show. Omega's Omega. on Omega's on Omega's on Country Rule. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. There's Omega, which you can kind of watch on its own, but there's so many throwbacks and references and characters that return that it's not as rewarding. Uh, and wasn't it? It's, I can't remember if Soul of Gold is still streaming legally on. I think it's on. I think it's on. I think it's on Tubi. I think yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on Two B Two, and that one like you again like you need to watch at least the Sanctuary arc for because that's primarily what they reference. Well, they what I remember them referencing from the last time I watched it is a lot of things that happened in that, and so like you're you're hindering all of these other places that you've licensed out to, and they're probably not going to want to relicense them, which is going to hinder it even more in the United States. I don't know. It just it's it's stupid to not have the base series it after they sunk so much money into dubbing it because dubbing is not cheap mm -hmm. regardless of what drama going on in the video game industry right now wants to make you think dubbing is not cheap and so um they they dubbed all 100 and what what is it 114 114 episodes and if you if you started watching it from the time that they got all 114 episodes up, there wasn't even a year after episode 114 was posted before it got taken down. Shit. So it's it, it made it so hard because, yeah, if in the grand scheme of things, when you look at shows like Naruto and One Piece and stuff like that, 114 episodes is nothing, but it's still a lot to wade through. And if you have, if you only have like eight or nine months to get through 110 episodes and you are not a 13 year old that has like all the free time in the world. It's kind of hard. Not okay. gonna lie. A couple uh, a couple of last minute notes. Like I said, like I was mentioning I was mentioning Doku's voice actor. Uh, that sounds like he's just like doing a really bad um, chop sucky like, you know, um the, 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 the kung fu double of 1970s. Sayori sounds like she was like she was she like Sayori sounds like she was she didn't want to be there. She was like, Shirio, I believe in you. You can do yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> like, like she was like, like, is that it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just. I, I bet you it was like, it was like, it was like, five, it was like four fifty at the dubbing station. They had to be out there. They had to be out at five o'clock, and they didn't want to pay union dues. They're like, okay, just put down something. He's like, can I have my ten dollars now? <laughs> you get five because of because of half assing. I'm pretty sure that's that's what they said. Knowing, knowing how ADV was, knowing how ADV was at the time, like I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I'm pretty sure there were like a few bounce checks that, that involved with uh, that was involved with it as well. One last thing before we, before we before I let you before we go into the actual episode, here's an interesting little factoid: same voice actor who played Shiryu in the ADV dub ended up voicing ended up voicing Death Mask in the in the Netflix dub. Oh, <laughs> so Jay Hickman went from voicing Shiryu in that in the in the in the in the ADV dub, and now he ended up. In the he ended up in the Netflix up as Death Max, so it's like total role reversal. Really interesting, and also very, 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 very interesting because like his shirty was very stoic to a to a point where it's just like it's almost like like he's just like I, I, again this I, I, again I, I don't know if I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the fact that like maybe this was like five this is like four thirty and he needed to be and he just, and he saw the clock would be five o'clock and he needed to be and they wanted to get out of the out of the recording booth as much as they can or there was no real direction given to the voice actors. But you can clearly tell it's like they just tell him that he was like they pretty much gave a, they pretty much told the guy, look, he's stoic. That was his only direction, and he was just being like this stoic, like stoic um, anime guy. And like, oh man, because there's a lot more. In, there's a lot more um, to shoot you than just being stoic person. He's a he's a he's a he's a very like you know he has like you don't get like because like a lot of times where he's he's supposed to be angry, but I don't get that anger. It's more like indifference from a lot of what he's saying a lot of times, and it's just like. Oh man, it gets to the point where where you're watching it, and it's just like it's like you can clearly tell it's like they're not they are not putting their they're not putting their one hundred percent, and and it's and it it gets really noticeable when you when you watch it when you when you, when you compare it to like the when you go back to the other dub where you have studio studio who's like giving it all, like the voice actor is just giving it his all because like, he's just an incredible actor and he you know the same voice actor Jay Hickman. He was he was hamming it up like you'd know tomorrow like they, like they, <laughs> he was hamming it up and like he did and like he was just eating that he was eating that scenery like he was eating like a five a, a three course meal at, at, at a at a fancy restaurant he was having fun compared to this where it's like I felt like you know I felt like they're like you know they just didn't want to be there and you can clearly tell from the dub it's like they just didn't want they didn't they didn't give a shit so toy for God's sakes get me get this Netflix up, get the Netflix up somewhere out there. Please, I don't want to. I don't want to see tired voice actors trying to like do stuff. Cause 
I think like like it, I think like like I, I think it's um it, it's a net it's a net negative that we had to like do this like that, that just had to happen like this. And I'm just really really happy that um and I'm, I'm really sad. I'm happy that we have a Netflix sub. I'm really happy the Netflix sub is great. I just wish it was more, a lot more accessible to to the people so we can actually make so I can, so we don't have to go to situations like this ever again. Yeah. All right. With all that said, Bankas. Uh, walk, walk, uh, okay. walk us through this as much as, as fast as you can. Okay, uh, episode 50, 50? Yeah. Yeah, episode 50 k- kicks in where we left off. Uh, like, Shiryu is battling Deathmask, and it seems that he's getting the upper hand, but then Deathmask uh, <clears throat> completely stops his attacks and starts to counterattack and to dominate Shiryu again, revealing the difference of power between the Gold Saints and the Bronze Saints. Uh, Shiryu gets defeated, and he's about to be thrown again from the... To, to the to the entrance of the underworld, but uh, before he gets to throw him, Dead Mask is stalled by the spirits of the lingering death that uh, of the all the victims, or well, it's implied it's all the victims, or at least a few of them, of the people that he has killed, start to gather up and try to stop him. Chirio tries to make uh, Death Mask realize that these are the people that were affected by him and that uh, have succumbed to, to the evil that, that of his actions. But uh, Death Mask only laughs this off. He, he throws them off and he throws them back to the under. He throws them directly to the underworld. That's when Chirio realizes and, and asks, like, how is it possible for a man that's supposed to be the highest in or- in the order of the saints who are supposed to serve Athena and justice? How can uh, uh, the gold cloth protect protect a man that's so evil. After that, Shiryu starts to try to to fight back because uh, Death Mask is, tr- is trying to push him in the slowest and most uh, sadistic way possible. Shiryu counterattacks and attacks his leg, and this is when he finally hits his bare leg because the the can the the piece of the cloth has left uh, Death Mask. Then the the rest of the of the cloth leaves him, and he and, and he is barely he's left without any protection. Shiryu decides to dispose of his cloth. They have a, a fair fight after Shiryu talks about the nature of the seven sense and the essence of the cosmo. Shiryu is able to rise his, uh, his cosmo to the seven sense and overpower Death Mask, throwing him back into the throwing him to the mouth of the entrance of the underworld and basically killing him, defeating right. him, and his soul returning to to the Cancer Temple where it has been purified. Then Shun finds him, and he and Shiryu realizes through a conversation with his master Doko, who was able to save Shunrei, that, uh, that well, she's fine, and that Shiryu has regained his sight because of uh, of his of the miracle of by having reached the seven sense even for a moment. Then they decide to uh, catch up to Seiya on the Lina Temple, where we see where we leave the episode where Seiya is uh, encountering Ioria in, in a with a some. Uh, uh, I I forgot the word. It's omnibus music playing, and that's where the episode ends. All right, uh, cover for you. any 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 thoughts on the actual episode itself? Um, well, I I knew that th- that this fight took a lot of twists and turns, um, but I also distinctly remembered uh, Shidiu getting naked. You know, because he gets naked in every one of his fights. So I was like, <laughs> oh, he, he hasn't gotten naked yet, so we're not done yet. Like every time it looked like it might be done, I was like. Oh no, but he isn't naked yet. So um, my my main thing with this, and we touched on it a few episodes back. I can't remember exactly when, but the the whole cloth randomly deciding that Death Mask is evil plotline was just kind of weird um, because I mean Death Mask has presumably been the the gold saint of Cancer for many many years at this point. Um, it's they don't they're not really clear on ages and stuff like that at least not at this point in the anime but why now like why why just now because it's been implied that he's killed hundreds possibly even thousands of people some of them even children and he doesn't care and he's you know this lowly bastard and basically all of the gold saints at least the ones that know he exists because some of them i guess that was one of the weird plot points towards the beginning of this arc is that like not all the gold saints knew each other but then they're all friendly towards each other so that they did know each other i don't know but anyway everybody that's mentioned death mask has also implied or outright said that he's a douchebag and and like a, a horrible person so why now has the cloth decided like in this moment why wh- like why did it make this decision because this presumably was not his first fight against another like saint i it just doesn't make any sense to me uh, it's actually a very complex point because 
Unfortunately, there hasn't like been a single answer to this. There, there are quite a few points that I can try to make as to the reason for that happening, but like there has never really been like an like a, like an outright explanation as to why that happened. Like the reason why the cloth leaves him is that finally the will of the cloth recognized just how irredeemable he was, and there is a like the reason why he didn't leave him before that is that despite that mask being a fucking asshole, he. And he, being a, a self-centered, narcissistic sociopath, he still believed that he was fighting for justice. And in his view, justice was in power. And the power was held by, well, the Pope or Saga, like because he knows the identity of the Pope. So he knows that Saga is the most powerful saint, so he decides to follow him. Uh, <clears throat> but but like, there's always the argument that the, the cloth still allowed him to be his wearer for two reasons. One, there is a there is an aspect of destiny, like uh, like the, the the premeditated destiny in Greek mythology that's very loosely touched every, every time, every now and then in in the series, especially in the manga. So the, the, like you have to be born like on, with the destiny of becoming a gold saint. That's why they all achieve, most of them achieve the status of gold saint even as children. So that's why he's the cancer gold saint. And uh, despite the fact that he's done evil actions, the cloud might still recognize the, the fact that he fights for justice, even if it's a justice that completely has nothing to do with the following Athena. And now realizing just the extent of his actions is when the cloud completely decides to abandon him. But it's kind of like, uh, it, like, okay, if you only watch the anime, it doesn't really make any sense. And I do agree with that. And even if you know this lore, there's still very, a lot of arguments to like, but then when do they decide to do? Like, what constitutes justice? Like, th there are many things that can be like argued against that even. So it's kind of a very difficult thing to try to justify. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those topics that always leaves my head hurting a bit because... By any logic, you wouldn't expect a fucking asshole to be able to wear the cloth. But at the same time, Saga did all those terrible things as well, and, and the cloth never actually left him. And and in Next Dimension, in the sequel, like there are gold saints that... I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but there are gold saints that explicitly say that they will betray Athena. And the cloths still protect them. So it's like, like why do, don't the cloths abandon them just them and there, right? Like the cloths don't completely follow Athena as well, and there is it's something that Kuromata has established but hasn't really dwelt too much upon. So, like we don't really have a straight answer for that, and Death Mask is just the primary example of that. Yeah, I, I, you, you hit up all my points there. It's just like I really have no explanation whatsoever about the, uh, this point because it's like you and I, even I have to ask a lot of those questions, and like now that you mentioned, it, it's like yeah, I think it, it, it's just I, it's just one of those things where it's like. It's not like even the creator himself hasn't hasn't brought up that point yet, and it's just that's interesting, I guess, or, or not interesting, but it's, it's more it's it's more like like I don't know, it, it, it it's just a weird it's just a weird like thing that they that they decided that they decided like put in, I guess, and it's just like I guess for plot convenience it just just happened, and like I said, maybe we can like, interpret this like in terms of like in terms of like a, a Greek uh, like a Greek um. A, a Greek drama where it's like the Deus Ex Machina, like at the last minute, something the God's intervention w puts it like does something to to do something to to, to like um wave to, to hand wave the, the issue away. So I, I guess the, I guess that the, uh, that's what they're trying to go for with that. But I no, just, I I think the thing that bothered me the most is that up until this point, there's I'm I'm trying to word it correctly so that I make sure that, like the, they they keep establishing that. Once they've unlocked the seventh sense, they're almost more or less basically on the same level as a gold saint. It's I understand that they that the that Seiya and friends are still learning how to harness that, and that it's like short bursts that they're able to use it at this point. The ones that know how to so far, anyway. Um, and that it's, it, but it 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 would have been more interesting to me to see Shiryu legitimately defeat him because it didn't feel with with the mask crippling death mask basically or the mask the the sorry the cloth basically crippling death mask it didn't feel like a legitimate win to me personally and i think it would have been more rewarding if they would have let him stand on his own two feet i understand that shiryu has to get naked every time he fights it's probably in his contract somewhere so maybe that's why <laughs> they chose to go down that road um but it it just felt weird that because I'm trying to think of, of all the ones that they fought so far. Because Mood, they didn't fight. Aldebaran, they just had to knock the horn off of him. Gemini, they didn't defeat technically. And plus, Iki kind of interfered to help save um, Shun. Shun. 
Uh, Aquarius definitely didn't get defeated. Yeah, so this is the first time that they've technically defeated a gold saint, and it just didn't feel earned, I guess. Mm. I, I get what you mean in the sense of, like, looking at it from, from the aspect of them being on equal grounds, or maybe she ga gaining a power level where he would be, like, on equal footing with uh, Death Mask, and that he had to be... Uh, like as you said, because it is indeed a crippling of the, of the character. It's not a justification. It's just the explanation as to why this happens. There is a reason for why, even in Saint Seiya Next Dimension, the sequel, and that this is one of the main criticisms towards that story. That the fact that they're having difficulty dealing after even after the battle with Hate is like that they're still having difficulty defeating the the Gold Saints. But, but the thing with the power levels in Saint Seiya is that it's not as simple or it doesn't work as in most shonen series where they reach a level and they remain on that level and usually the next opponent it's on a level higher than that here it's more of a they kind of have a base level and they are able to get their their, their power levels to the level of their opponent or even higher but then they return to their base level for moments it's like like I in, in sense something like that yeah because in, in saint Seiya, the the essence of power which is the cosmo the essence of the cosmos is the seventh sense. And the only saints in the whole army of Athena that actually have the, the, the mastery of the seventh sense are the 12 gold saints, which would make them the closest uh, humans, uh, closest to the gods in terms of power. The other saints and the other enemies, even from the other armies, can tap into the, the they, they can tap into the cosmos, but they don't dominate the seventh sense. That's why their, their power levels are, are lower. Add that to the fact that Kurumada's a uh, motto and and his and and the main motive behind Saint Seiya and most of his other works has always been, uh, like I I can't believe I'm gonna make this comparison, but you remember the fight in Naruto between Naruto and Neji, how some people are geniuses and how some have to work their ass to to be able to to overcome their difficulties. Yeah, like, like Kurumada's uh, Kurumada's characters have always been like that. It's not a matter of being more powerful than your opponent. It's a matter of working your ass off and and facing adversity and always standing up even at, at the face of adversity in order to be able to achieve those goals or in order to be able to defeat the enemies. That's why the the Bronze Saints in in a way are still capped at. Uh, uh, they're more powerful than normal Bronze Saints, but they've never been able to fully master the Seven Saints even up until now. So it's not a justification. It's the, just the explanation as to how it works in universe. And in this case, with the fight with the uh, Death Mask, Shiryu was only momentarily able to to reach the the to to elevate his Cosmo higher than Death Mask for just a moment. But it's that moment that allowed him to win. And they were in more or less uh, somewhat similar conditions because Shiryu was able to burn his Cosmo, and Death Mask was crippled by not being able to wear his cloth. I get what you mean. Definitely, it's. It's just that I, I suppose that I've come to see it, that I understand why that is. But yeah, I, I totally get what you mean by not by saying it doesn't really feel that earned because, like, it would make sense for them to all be dead if the if the, if the gold saints were just that powerful, or or you would expect them to like have reached that level and stay in that level. Well, I, I think it's more like in a narrative sense that we're we're now about halfway through the temples. I think with is it Leo the halfway point? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to do the math on almost, no. almost. Is Leo if, five? Yeah, Leo is the fifth house. Okay, so we're we're get we're almost halfway through. But still, they they we've fought a few of the gold saints now. We've we've there there's been various forms of quote winning against the gold saints. Like we said with all the Baron, all they had to all, all they had to do was you know chip off his horn, and the others all they had to do was combine their powers and learn the value of teamwork the Gemini one was just weird altogether, but, like, I feel like they need, like, I, I don't know how to word it properly. It just, it felt like this was the opportunity, because, especially, I think it's because Deathmax is so, such an irredeemable character, and we, we kind of knew he was probably going to be the one to die, because most of the Gold Saints just kind of get left off the hook most of the time, <laughs> because they were so popular and everybody loved them. Um, so we we knew that he was probably going to be one of the ones to die, and it just felt it didn't feel I don't know I don't know how to word how I feel it it didn't feel earned is the only way I know how to put it. Like I, I get what you're saying about all of that, but like I don't understand why that flash of his Cosmo couldn't have happened while Deathmask had the armor on, and that been the finishing blow. But the whole like armor betraying him type of thing it made it feel like they were that. It, it, I guess it was just like a really like glaring instance of plot armor 
because it, it even more so than than normal because you're literally they're nerfing a villain so that your character can be able to defeat them. It's not even like the character magically finding a new ability or like super becoming super powerful out of nowhere or whatever. It's literally they nerf the villain he was fighting against. It just felt weird. I get um, it. I don't see uh, it as nerfing Death Mask. I see it more because they okay they did nerf him, but I always saw it more as putting them on more equal footing. Than, than nerfing the, the villain necessarily, but but yeah, that did happen. I see it more. I saw more. I saw I saw this action more as um as his, him getting his comeuppance for all the all the evil he's like you know he's he's had all he's had, he's had all these oh, he's done all these horrible things and it's like enough is enough. Here's your comeuppance. You're 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 weak and now I'll shoot you as as most powerful and this, this is your comeuppance. Congratulations, you are now in hell. So I, I guess we can, if you want to read it that that way, I mean, I, I, that 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 seems a little bit more plausible. But like I said, um, like I said, it, it's it's just it's just a hard thing. It's hard. It's just a hard thing to like uh, to to pinpoint. To be honest with with with, with um with, with, with what they were trying to do, because like we don't we got, we got, we I, I I guess it's just like it's such a complicated matter altogether. So um, why don't we move on to episode F fifty one? But what, any last thoughts, uh, Conrad or Furry? Uh, other I, other than me reminding Ben Haas to, uh, because I, I think it was Ben Haas that said he had something to say about the filler, that because they did they were trying to this is the episode where they were trying to justify it's like it's a good thing say I went and got that water for you even though that you know, they oh, yeah. did nothing. <laughs> I just wanted to remind Ben Haas about that to be honest with you before we move on to that fifty one. All right, you're you you have the floor, Ben Haas, about the about filler stuff. All right, yeah. Okay, I'll say this. At least Toy did take the opportunity to try and justify one of their fucking fillers with uh, <laughs> with what actually happened with, with that actually happened in main story. But I uh, I don't want to sound an asshole be like an asshole because it, it, it might by sound that way. By the way, going on forward, because I have a lot of criticisms of, for the anime nowadays that I've read the manga. But I have to remind. Well, I have to to say this. Sensei is still my favorite anime of all time. It's still probably my favorite series of all time, and I still love the anime to death. Without the anime, like the series probably would not be where where it is. It's just baffling to see some of the things that Toei decided to change without any rhyme, logic, or reason. I'll say this: is like that filler was pretty boring, and like it's so it's like just so stupid that they try to justify like, well, this is one of the reasons like that you were able to gain your your sight back. It finally paid off. Woohoo! <laughs> It was delayed by a week, but I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was, uh, but I was gonna say, um, I was gonna say, uh, concerning, concern, concerning him paying. Uh, you know what? I just like Conrad Frey, I just lost my fucking position right now. And you, <laughs> so yeah. sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, I am. I shouldn't. I should not be looking at like two different things at the same time. Even though I can do it, it's just I shouldn't. I shouldn't be doing that as well. Um. I, I I didn't have that much like I didn't have that much notes because like I thought it was I thought it was a solid I thought it was a solid episode. I these next these next these next two episodes I wrote down are just phenomenal episodes. Regardless of the well, regardless of episode forty nine being this really spotty dub, it was a great episode and it had a great fight and I was really having a lot of fun with it. I just wish it was that I wish I just kind of wish it was more of the Netflix dub, but. Other than that, like you know, I I was really really enjoying it. I really had a lot of fun with with, with this episode, and like the next episode too is actually really good. As a matter of fact, these next these next three episodes are really really good. Like I I like I remember I, I don't know why when I was a kid I thought these I thought these parts were really boring, but as I watch it again, like as I watch it again now for the show, I'm loving these. Ep I, I'm loving these next three these, these this episode and next and the next two afterwards are really good. I'm really I I really enjoy these episodes, but. You know, um, but regardless, um, you know we'll, we'll get to we'll get to that really quick when we get to it. One last thing, okay. Now I remember what I was to say, Ben. It's specifically to what you were saying. I think one of the things that you, that I always say to people when it concerns being crit, um, concerning being criticism about something you love is that it's it's good that you, it's good that you're critical. If you're not critical of something you love, then you don't love it. You're just blindly going after it. If you can if you had, if you look at the flaws of something and you you know accept. Because I think part of the part of it is like you have to accept a lot of the flaws. And one of the things that I've said constantly before, I, I, I see everything I love. I like whether it's a, whether it's video games, whether it's movies or whatever. I I I, say I absolutely love it. But I will also be the first guy to like have a long list of things that, that I hate on, things that I that I could change, or things that 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 are things that matter, because I like it that much. That makes sense. 
Yeah, completely. Because like you know you don't want you don't like you don't want to devote yourself blindly to it. You have to like I think the blind devotion is one thing, but questioning but questioning every questioning it actually 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 adds a little bit more to your to your knowledge and accepting that you know, some things cannot be explained like well, the stuff with like with the death mask. We we still don't have an answer, and that that's perfectly fine. And that's some, and that's something that's perfectly valid. You know, that's a valid, that's a valid, very valid criticism to to, to, to talk about. So, even though we we all love this series, there are some things that we can't stay. We can't just be like we can't stay quiet about either. So, I I do. I, I, I it's great that we're having these. And this this kind of conversations I want to have more of. Where um, where the thing is with uh, with all these conversations is that. We want. I want to make sure that, like, we show that the series is great, but also show the fact that the series is also kind of flawed in a way. Also, whether yeah. it's it, whether it's uh, whether whether it's because like storytelling reasons or, or just like them going too fast reasons or whatever for whatever other those reasons, it's a we we there has to like if we're not if we're not if we're blindly fall if we're blindly following something we're not really being we're not being active like what we're giving what we're giving feedback to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, nothing is perfect. Absolutely nothing is perfect. And there are always things that can be criticized and should be criticized with the intent of trying to 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 make it a, a better thing in the end. So, And actually, there's something in, in the later episodes that, that actually also touch on that point that I have, but we'll get there. All right. So why don't we go on to episode 51 then? Like, like you know... Why, why don't we why, episode fifty one? Um, we get we get we finally get to Iodia. I wrote down here in my notes because like the first thing you see is that his eyes are kind of glazed over, and I wrote down here, oh man, I was so high. I have the same note. Why, the why same do we thing. take the same notes? We always take the same notes. <laughs> what? That, didn't that happen in Dracula too? We like yes, our notes were exactly the same. Yes. Oh, God. You know, yeah, I, was, I was like, I put on there, I love how high as fuck he looks. You know, it's super funny that you mentioned that because I also thought this exact same thing because I actually oh read, I also read the manga because I, I wanted to see like if there were like any critical differences or things to to pick up on in, in the adaptation to here. There are, I'll say them in a moment. But uh, uh, like when I read that, like you see Ayori and he looks somewhat normal in, in, in this introduction to, to say it. Like he looks... Like he did when he originally appeared, in, in like in like wearing the the Leo cloth. But here in the anime, he looks like he's stripping. Like like he's not even looking at Seiya. He's looking way beyond at something we cannot see or understand. Yeah, he's he's got. We, we have a we have a saying here in the United States is like he's got like a thousand yard stare. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like he's seen shit, and like he just uh, and that's his face of like he's seen some shit. Yeah, he's definitely. And seen the worst part shit. is like the worst part is the worst part is his nightmare is not has just begun. <laughs> um so yeah but why, why don't we keep why don't we keep on going it's like yeah so, so, so like say goes out there and he's trying to plead with with uh with, uh, with iodia with iodia because he's like but, like well, i thought you were fighting i thought you were fighting i thought you know you're fighting on our side you, you devoted yourself to athena and i wrote down here because i saw these because i saw a couple of jobbers like when the fuck did these jobbers come in because like there's a couple of jobbers that they're there and i'm pretty sure like, they're trying to establish trying to give you a, a, a false like you know sense of like maybe he's trying to um Maybe he's tr he's trying to like play it up to the to the to you know to, to the Pope, but no, we, we figure out later like something else. And like I have complaints about something that we we're gonna get to later, like uh, about how this all happened. But um, but cool. for, regardless, regardless, we get to see a couple of guys that are like, oh my god, he's so powerful. Why don't we go? We gotta go report to the Pope. And I, I and I, I and I wrote this down because like I I was because one of the things I really liked about this episode was like this episode was was. It was amazingly animated. I thought it was like when I like that's why I really like this episode. That, this is like I, when I when I do these episodes, I'm like usually either half paying attention and writing notes. And this was this is one of the few times where it's like I I was like I, I have a, I have a lot of notes, but I was also paying attention to what was going on screen. And I said I wrote down here, I'm totally fine. I'm totally feeling the Chingo Rocky art in this episode because I felt like he really hit his stride with this episode. And it, and it's like. When we get to something much later with a couple of characters, like you can totally tell, like he designed a lot of these characters, and you can tell he was having so much fun doing like these alternate designs for all these other characters as well. Um, so we, we get so during the fight, we get we get to see uh, some someone was intruding on the on the on the sanctuary, and eventually this part they, made me so mad. Oh, okay. So we, and eventually we find out it's uh, it's actually Marin. I was gonna say Shina, but that's that's another issue altogether. And he gets a t and she gets attacked by one of the like one of the by one of the jobbers like by one of the jobber soldiers and I'm like I like this jobber soldier because he has like a nice headset a nice head a nice head uh a, a nice helmet 
Like it looks like the, like, he got himself a special helmet. That's why he's a leader. <laughs> and also too, it's like you know, I I I, I forgot. I, I wrote down. I wrote down too because like uh, like we cut we, as because this is not a flashback. This is actually happening on the side of what's going on. And so we get to a flashback where um, Marin is is meeting with Junae, and I and I wrote down because like I've gotten so used to Junae being being no so omnipresent in the CGI show. I wrote down. I forgot how how Junae was in the disposal so so quickly in the in, in the anime than she was in the CGI show. Yeah, that I mean that was one of the parts that I enjoyed was that she was a bigger part of it. I, a lot of people didn't like the characterization they gave her, but at least it was something. She had no character in this anime. I wrote no. down. I also and maybe you can, and I wrote down. I wrote down this ask Benkas. Did she die in the manga? No, 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 no. Okay, it should, it's like so weird because in in the manga, like. She tries to stop Shun, like she like uh, Shun says no, I'm I'm still going, and she kind of cries, and then she passes out. Ah, no, 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 no. Now I remember. Now I remember how it, how it goes in the manga. Okay, because it was weird. Like in her original introduction, like he never attacked her. Like she just like, oh Shun, please, please, I don't want you dying. And he says like sometimes like like a man has to do like like this sort of stuff and sacrifice himself for the greater good. And then he appears with her a uh, a uh, knock knocked out when they're about to leave on the airplane and she's left uh, she's left in in um, in the they allow her to stay at the mansion but she never appears again like she appears in, in a flashback later but like moving on forward to the story she never appears again so so that was her last interaction in the anime in the manga until now, by the way, like she's barely a character in the manga. That's why I said, like, yeah, I don't blame, I don't blame them for trying to expand on her role. Like she doesn't really do anything too much, but just, uh, just that and revealing like who attacked Andromeda Island. And not just that too. It's like I said, it's like that's why I was confused too. It's like, did you kill her? Did they kill her in, in in the manga? Because I thought that like because like we don't get to see her fate. No. That um. She's somewhere. Out yeah, there. she's somewhere. She's yeah. Somewhere. Well, so, so it's like it's it's one of those things where it's like maybe maybe they need to dispose her somewhere. So we get to so like she's so after that after that we get to the point where um, Merritt is is conf is trying to get questions as to what's going on, and this big huge dude comes out and I wrote down here this is some uh, uh, this is some fist of the North Star bullshit. Yeah, um, contrary to what everybody's thinking, he's really ugly. I'm just putting it out there in the universe. <laughs> That's fair enough. Not every large man is my type. <laughs> um, no, and I, 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 I also wrote down there. I also wrote down here when they introduced him. Who? <laughs> well, the, the thing that makes me mad is so from the very first episode of this anime, they've established that having muscles and being big does not equate to being strong within the sense of the show, and that your cosmo is what's important. Marin is a silver knight. This guy couldn't even become a bronze saint. Why is this guy giving her so much trouble? Yes, he's a big man and he's got muscles and shit, but like she should be able to use her Cosmo and her speed and her attacks and you know everything that that she she's a formidable fighter. We've seen it before. Why is this no one, this nobody giving her so much trouble? It made me so mad because like they established literally from the first episode when Saya was fighting against Cassius that your your muscles have nothing to do with how powerful of a of a knight you are. And why why is this guy able to like literally almost kill her? She's fought against all people way more powerful than him. I, it just it really pissed me off. This this yeah. entire this entire middle section of this episode where it's dealing with Marin because Marin has been established to be she's well number one she's Silver Saint which, which I believe at this. We, we know that at this point. We didn't at the beginning, but we know it now that she, uh, technically is Silver Saint. So she's a Silver Saint, and she's presumably one of the stronger Silver Saints, because she's one of the only ones that's still alive <laughs> at this point. But this guy, they they established that this guy couldn't even become a Bronze Saint. So why is, I don't know, I was very angry at this whole subplot point here. I actually want to add to that, because I feel the exact same way. I Fucking hate this filler so much. I I had forgotten just how bad it was uh, until I rewatched it. I was like, oh god, this is so bad. Like this this is prime. This is prime. When I when I say this is to a not understanding the series, this is the prime example of what I mean by that. Like not understanding how the universe works, not understanding how the characters are, not understanding like like they, they just did this filler for the sake of I don't know. I I really don't know pacing. 
They could have done so much better things. And, and I feel even more angry that the fact that uh, this is one of the few episodes that's actually animated by, by Araki and directed by him. And oh, like, you can they, totally tell. You can yeah, totally tell. I, yeah, and, and they wasted and they wasted that resource on this? Like, ugh, ugh, it's so infuriating. Like, Marin should have been able to kill this guy with one punch. Like, there is no rhyme or reason for this to have happened. Like, they completely didn't understand how the essence of Cosmo works for the for this scene. Like, it makes absolutely no sense. It really it, it, it would have been better if it had been, like, another Silver Saint or even, like, a Gold Saint that showed up to try to prevent her from getting into Sanctuary. But, but the fact that it was this guy, number one, who we've never heard of before, number two, isn't even... They've established that he's not even one of the little moot people. He, he doesn't have a cloth at all, period. He's not even one of those people that, like, it, it kind of looks like they're wearing a cloth, but they don't have any established, like, constellation or whatever, those people that show up every now and then. Like, he's just some random-ass dude. I don't know. I was really mad about it. The the entire time, I was just furious. Like, every time it cut back to this storyline, I was just, nope, not feeling it. I mean, I, I can't believe, like, I, like, I think this 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 scene, these scenes would have benefited better if, if she wasn't even, if, um, if Marin wasn't even part of it. This would have looked better if, like, the if like the jobber, the jobber, the jobber, um, the, the, the jobber bronze saints, or even the steel saints, it would it, we we could have been a lot better. As a matter of fact, I, I think in, in as I'm saying this out loud, I think the silver saints would have the, the steel saints would have been a lot better for this, and I could and I, I, I could explain like where where the saint, the steel saints were, and also I, I could also establish like you know they're not the, you know there's just some things that they they're not really capable of fighting just yet. Well, we know where the steel saints are. They're still in line at Starbucks for Sayori's complicated ass order. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really old callback. Like that was, yep. <laughs> that was our go-to joke for them back uh, months and months ago. We were doing the original series. Yep, because it's like you know, because like they had she had she has to get like five shots. She has to get five shots, five, five shots of espresso, uh, three shots of mocha, two uh, uh, whipped cream. You know, it has it has to be like goat's milk, not like not like go, not like cow's milk. Yada yada yada. And she's gonna sit there and watch how many pumps you put in there too. She's gonna count yeah. them. She put yeah. for five pumps. She's getting five pumps. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like this big guy decides to um, this, this guy decides to bum rush Marin and he, and he pushes her over the cliff and yeah, like, like he he like is like giving her a bear hug and like crushing her like uh, trying to crush her spine and she kind of like backflips off the edge with him like her back step. Oh, that's right. Like she 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 yeah, he, like I'm I'm stuck right off the edge there. I'm, I'm, sorry, I, I'm stuck, so like, let me let me see if I can let me see if I can try to like do a let me see if I can do a sick backflip to get out of this. Do you want to know what's more infuriating? This is, this is exactly the same thing that Geki did to Seiya. Remember how Seiya got that out of that technique? He remembered <laughs> what Marin taught him. <laughs> oh, God. oh God! It's just forgetting all of the stuff that he taught him. I, like I this it. is the problem that, that I really have with Toy. Like he makes characters that were never stupid. They make them fucking stupid. That, that, like, this is like, uh, let me get this straight, people. Like, this is Knights of the Zodiac season one level stupid. Oh, that's Lord. how bad it is. That's how bad it is. Like, it, like, put aside the animation, put aside the music, put aside the fact that this is a classic anime. This is Knights of the Zodiac season one level stupid. It's bad. Very bad. Um, so yeah, we cut back, we, we cut back to the, we, is this where we get to see Cassios as well at this point? Or is this after? Yes, yes, but right at the end. Well, okay. I think, I think that while Shina is still unconscious, like because Cassius does appear in this episode, but like barely. Yeah, because the thing is, I was because I because I, I was like because I mentioned I mentioned here because I think yeah now now, now that you mentioned because I wrote down my notes there because I think um because I was wondering because I know I know there's a scene I don't know if this is in this episode or next episode, but they made up but they brought up a good point is that well I, I brought up a good point here in my notes that um. That, that during the that I think Cassius over here is that like say is fighting that the I'm pretty sure those, those those jobber guys that 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 were that were in the the Leo Temple must, must have like told like one dude and they told another dude and now it's going around the it's going around the sanctuary that you know say like that Aoda is um that he you know, he's taking Seiya's ass and stuff like that and I wrote down the notes because like they say like they say they say like he is the most proudest of all the saints of of all the, of all the gold, gold saints and I'm like. Wait a minute. Last time I already was in the sanctuary, they all hated him. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing too. I, I hate that we have the same notes. Yeah, because well, because they made a big deal that his brother was a traitor, and so he was perceived as a traitor by proxy. So yeah, he was. As far as the the lore is concerned, he was never beloved, as far mm -hmm. as we know. 
So that was a but, weird that was a weird comment to make. I think that's in fifty two, but yeah, I, I, that that was a weird comment that I remember. But um, but yeah, we go we cut back to say he's like he's scrambling to figure out like what the what he has to do to like beat to beat him, and he's all like you know what like I I had I couldn't beat him before, but like I couldn't beat him before, but even then I still had the, the I still had the assistance of the the cloth this and that, and like he eventually realizes that he has to like focus all of his energy and focus everything so he can see to, to enable his seven cents. And he does his, um, Leia, uh, Ioria does his lightning plasma, and Seiya was able to get through it. And it was a really good scene. And now that I'm saying, now that I'm saying this all out loud, as much as I really like this episode, I, I'm like trying to like doubt it again because of that middle part. But the stuff, the stuff, with, the stuff with the Leo stuff was actually really good. I'm not gonna deny that. So, any thoughts, um, Carreta Furry? Yeah, it was overall. Like if you if you ignored the start the stuff with Marin, it was good to see Marin again. First of all, like I I always like seeing Marin, but if you ignore the like gaping plot holes with that, I, I I generally feel very positive about the Leo fight because it delves into like loyalties and it kind of has the whole mind control thing, and um, of course Cassius is back, who is one of my favorite characters in the franchise. So I, it it was it was good enough. If you ignore that middle part, <laughs> thank us your thoughts on episode fifty-one. Basically, I feel the same way. Like the the episode itself is very good. It's just that that stupid filler that's so fucking bad almost ruins it. Well, no, no. Uh, let me get my thoughts straight. It doesn't almost ruin it. It doesn't take away from the awesomeness that is the fight between Seiya and Ayoria. And the, like the ending of the episode is is magnificent. It's just a shame that that fucking filler is in there. Like, like that's the worst part of the episode, easily, and that's probably one of the worst things Toei did. Uh, but taking that off and just ignoring that, it's a it's a great episode. I really like the dynamic between evil Ayoria and Seiya realizing that uh, what that he's being evil and the fact that he has to fend for himself and basically fight for his life. Ayori uh, still having somewhat of a because we see this in the next episode, but we still see like Seiya's determination shine on through. That's what I really like. Yeah, and I, I, it's one. So I was just gonna say I, now that I'm thinking about it, because one of the things that we praised the CGI show for, and that's not a legally binding phrase, so don't use that against me in the future. But one of the things that we praised the CGI show for was they introduced. Um, Aphrodite much earlier. Partially, yeah. I'm sure, because they knew they weren't going to get to the Aphrodite fight in season two, and they just, they, they'd they already made the character model, why not go ahead and use them for part of it? But would that not have been a much better thing for this series to do, to have Aphrodite be the one waiting there to stop her? Because Aphrodite is also very loyal to Saga. Yes, but uh, that wouldn't have been able. That wouldn't have been possible because Aphrodite hadn't been created yet. Like at that point, I don't remember it. At what point in this? No, wait. Never mind. No, 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 no. I'm thinking like my timeline started across. He had already been created. Because you're right. Mentioned in the manga because of the yes. the whole uh, uh, Andromeda Island thing. Yeah, at this point it had already been mentioned. In but um, if I remember correctly, though, wasn't what, what, what didn't they actually want to put? Then they put in um. Did they put in Milo instead, or was that like a red herring that they that they? Put no, in? no, no. They did Milo first because they decided to once again like show like a path. A path. Uh, they decided to show Shun's master and training ground before Kurumata did, and they decided to like in the anime they made that as a filler to to show uh, okay. uh, Milo as to to show Milo as a as a threat. But Kurumada decided to give them the middle finger, and and he ma put it in the manga that the one that actually killed his master was uh, Aphrodite. So they basically shot themselves on the foot when they had to animate that because they had to insert him there somehow to correct well, then, on their own mistake. Then it also could have been uh sure. my my mind just went blank. Um Scorpio Milo. It could have been yeah. Milo that, that, yeah. that stopped her there. Just somebody that is still loyal to the Pope, other than Leo, because obviously Leo is gonna be busy. But one of the other gold saints should have done this in place of this nobody, because number one, it would have developed them further and given them more screen time, which they deserve. And number two, it wouldn't have been so cringe to to watch. Yeah, I actually agree with you. They could have gone that route. They could have used Milo for, for this. Or any of the other scenes. Or create a new one or something, but not this. All um, right. Um, is, is that all your guys' thoughts? Any final thoughts on, on, on the episode on Benkos? Yeah, despite my ramblings, I actually really like this episode. It's just a shame <laughs> that fucking filler. Um, 
final thoughts, Carmen Furry on this on these. Why are we doing I, double comp final thoughts? <laughs> I thought I thought I thought, I thought it was, well, you know what? Never mind. You know what? Why don't we just go on to episode fifty two? Um, we continue. We continue. <laughs> we we get to cut. We got we cut to Cassius, who's been who's been taking care of Marin, not Marin, China. <laughs> The brain rot. It's that. It's the CGI brain rot, man. I swear. At least you didn't write down that he was protecting uh, Pizzazz because I did it first. <laughs> oh Lord! So I wrote down here. I do like that. I do like that. The anime does a, lo- a greater job with trying to make trying to make Cassius a, a like a, a like a, like have like a little bit of sympathy during these during these um sessions because oh, yeah. I, like because if there's one thing that one thing that the CGI show try to like rush out rush out the door with is that they try to like try to give us that 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 sense of sympathy. But here, one of the things I really love is that, you know, he's overhearing stuff and he's all like, he still has that anger, but he's also like kind of conflicted as well. But I do really appreciate that they try to, that they find a way to, like, he's kind of in two, he's kind of in two positions of like, on one hand, he still has a lot of anger and a lot of resentment towards Seiya. But on the other, he also is like slowly trying to be like, you know, he's also like piecing together. It's like, maybe, maybe Seiya is the one that, maybe Seiya is the one. And also maybe maybe Shina maybe saw something that that he doesn't that he doesn't understand and that maybe that's why he's protecting him. So it's like slowly as he's going around, he's also he's hearing these things about Seiya and stuff like that. And we we cut to a flashback to like him of of um, Iolia bringing bringing back uh, Shina back to back to, back to sanctuary to Cassius, and she's been taking care of him ever since ever since she's got injured. And we get to the point where um and so we get to, so it gets to the point where um they, they, like Shanna wakes up. And she's questioning what's going on, and at first, Cassio's and this is a, a brilliant. Part. This is such a brilliant thing that they did. It's something I really love. At first, he was hesitant, and you could tell like he was he was really hesitant about telling China what was going on. And uh, I, well, it's unless it's like one of the, a really great scene. There's also another scene where like, oh my god, really? Where he's like, he 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 says like he says what's going on, and China just freaks it's like flips out because like she realizes like she is in even grave danger. And begins to, and she begins to like begins to go out her weekend thing to go to, uh, to go go back to the Leo Temple. The reason and one of the things that um uh, one one of the things that I wrote down here is because like as as he's explaining things he's explaining things in detail. He went to the point like of the fa- of the Phantom Demon Fist, and I'm like, when did you learn about all this? <laughs> yeah, how did he know that? How did you learn all about this? And like and it's like and, and we continue with the fight with with uh, with I with I with Iodia with Seiya. Seiya uh, Iodia has has went from being pissed off to being extra pissed off. His eyes are now blue. instead of being like glazed over. Now he's like now now he looks like me after like bringing Monster Energy. Well, yeah, because the the Pope said that that his trigger is when somebody attacks him, it sends him into a rage, and he won't stop until they die. So. The in the at the end of the last episode when Seiya got through his attack and physically struck him, that sent him off into like a his like deep enraged state or whatever. So mm-hmm. now now he's not gonna stop until Seiya dies. Well, until somebody dies. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, that's most of the episode. It's just Cassius like like you know trying to take care of Shina and also like him trying to explain what's going on to Shina as well, and also getting a little bit of flashback as to like where Shina was during this time as well. Um, like well, there is some parts of the fight there as well, but for the most part, it's just it, it's a. I do find it a strong episode to give us a little bit more of a give us a little bit more depth to Cassios because like before Cassios, like during, if we're taking if we're taking the anime in consideration, the last time we saw Cassios, he had no he had like no ear and he was really pissed off at Seiya because he was he pro- he said like you know he's a proud Greek person and he needs that plot to represent the the Greeks. But now he can slowly, slowly start seeing that's like you know he, he can he's totally sell even from his like expressions that he's like oh, maybe he was right maybe he was the right guy to be to be the, to be the the next to be the Pegasus saint so it's really good and really interesting that, that it was really good and interesting to see all that I wrote down here on my notes jeez Cassius it must be going you must be going crazy hearing Seiya's name all over the place in such in such in done in such a way but if I was him I'd be like shut, shut the fuck up man <laughs> you're shut up about that shut up about that. You shut up about that about that skinny little uh, that skinny little saint. If I have to hear his name one more time, I swear. I'm gonna... Well, I I thought that these two episodes were really good examples of how to how not to do filler and how to do filler. Uh, because in my opinion, filler should add something to the story, even if it's not going against the main plot. Because that technically it's not filler, but that's how the kids see filler these days. Is if it's not directly pushing the needle forward then it's filler but the last episode 
when we had the whole bit with Marin, we're not going to dwell on that too much anymore. But mm -hmm. yeah, but basically, it didn't take into account anything that she had done before. It didn't take into account her ability level or her Cosmo level or anything like that. It really was like just a inconsequential thing that happened in the long run. Yeah, it kind of bled over to this episode where like she was able to help boost his Cosmo by what like you know because she's like ethereal now because she may or may not be dead she's not dead but she may or may not be dead um but on the flip side we have all of this stuff with Cassius, which will eventually bleed back into the main plot but the difference with this is it remembers the history between Cassius and seiya but it also remembers the history between shina and seiya and and also so it's also the history between Sh uh, between shina and Cassius as well yeah, it, it it brings back these past elements and it develops those relationships further and it reminds you that of, of Shina's motivations that, you know, now that her face has been seen by Seiya, she's either got to kill him or marry him, mm -hmm. according to her. Like, that's her only two options now. And it kind of, it, it she because she even shouts out, I have to be the one to kill Seiya, even though she seems obviously more concerned that he doesn't die because she doesn't want him to die, obviously. Um, and that kind of leads to Cassius becoming overly jealous because Cassius has feelings for her. Like, this is a good way to do filler or way to do padding to an episode, as as Ramses would call it. Uh, because the fight... Give it, more meat, give it more meat to the bone, as I would say. Yeah, because the fight between, between Seiya and Aeodia is going on in the background. It keeps cutting back to that over and over again. But the it kind of slows down the pace and makes that fight be able to last longer because you also have to remember that this is all this entire arc this entire like 40 some odd episode arc is supposed to take place over 12 hours mm -hmm. so they in, in order to also make it feel realistic in that way i think it's good that they're cutting away from the the fights and having these other plot threads and things like that develop as well but this was the much better approach to doing it because it felt it felt earned. It felt like these characters deserved to have this, like the, this story time in the spotlight, and it felt like it was utilized properly. Like I'm always for having Marin on my TV screen more, but she was incredibly disrespected in that episode. Like that, that I didn't like. I didn't even remember that that happened. To be honest with you, I guess I just blocked it out of my mind because I was like, "Who is this like weirdly large, creepy looking dude? And what is going on?" Like I just. Did, point blank period didn't remember this and i've rewatched the show this arc recently too like when it was on netflix i rewatched this arc so it's weird that i still didn't remember this but by the way i forgot to say this earlier but but i need to before we, we close this topic of forever uh, like it doesn't help that in the mexican dub the i don't know why i don't know why but the way that they dubbed marin for that but like her voice actress is very, it's really good in the original anime but for some fucking reason in the in that fight she kept it make instead of making pain noises, she kept making like moaning noises. That it, that it sounded like they were uh, instead of engaging in a fight, that they were wrestling. If you know what I mean. Yeah, it, yeah, it sounded, they're, make, they're, it sounded they're making they're making the they're, they're making the two back. They're making the beast of two backs. If, if yeah, it sounded it sounds super awkward because if you if you actually close your eyes and you only listen at the sounds, it, it sounds like a porno. It was like what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe that's why, why did they dub it like this? Yeah, it, it it doesn't help that the other guy looks like a like a sex offender. So it's like, oh my god! <laughs> but, you know, any thoughts on this episode, Bankas? Okay, sorry about that. I just had to get it out of my chest. No, okay. you're you're good. You're good. Actually, I want to expand on on what uh, Furry said because he's absolutely right. This is actually it's funny. Like I don't understand today because this is exactly the opposite of what they did before. This is how you do filler. This is how you actually uh, make a character look good. This is how you make. Uh, the audience get invested in a character that okay funny funny thing about Cassius in the manga he is not such a nice guy like it, like in the in the anime it, it, it like it gets implied that he liked to torture his opponents but uh, but like he he it's just established that he defeated them right I don't remember if they, they actually stated that he killed them not only did he kill them in the manga he actually decapitated them and sadistically tortured them before killing them like the, 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 they actually have a panel where where he, the, he's shown with one of these uh, victims' heads, uh, like prior to the fight with Seiya. And so and the, like the 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 way that it goes in the manga, it's much more quicker. Like that's actually one of the things that I want to mention about that. It's like 
Cassius already knows about the, the Genro Maoken that uh, was mm. delivered to Ioria, but they never show how the hell he obtained this information. I just double check with the manga. He just knows. For some yeah. fucking reason, he just knows. So that's uh, what are those g g things where you have to say, Kurumada, would you mind explaining this to me, please? There is yeah. none. He just knows. Or like, I, 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 if you overheard, and who who's the one overhearing? Who's the one who's been? Who's the one over? Who's the one who's overhearing stuff at the sanction at like the Pope's temple and stuff like that? Like, just it like makes no the, sense. I like yeah. to imagine that Shaka is just secretly like a gossipy queen that's just going up. Did you hear the Pope? He used that special attack to brainwash Leo. Uh. <laughs> but, but go on, go on. So man. yeah, it's, it's one of those things where the anime actually takes time out of its way to try to give an explanation. One that if it, even if it's a bit far fetched, at least it's more feasible, right? Like the low level soldiers heard about this or saw this, and they're gossiping between each other. And Cassius learned that information through them. Makes perfect sense. And they also make Cassius look in a very sympathetic manner by actually showing how he took care of Shina. Like how, like you believe that he has feelings for her because you get to see it. They show that. They build on that. And you you actually believe more like his pain when when you see like how angry he is at the fact that she loves Seiya, who is his mortal enemy, instead of him, who has like this uh, loving and undoubting devotion towards her. Like, mm -hmm. that's really good filler. And I really applaud the anime for doing that because it actually makes Cassius look extremely sympathetic by comparison. Yeah, and it makes his actions much later very, very, very... Very, it makes it, it adds more to the impact that when we get to something much later, even though it's like in the even though like you know in the manga I think they do, they do kind of a good job. I think here I think here they do, I think it was one of the best choices that they can do is to actually do this little filler thing where he's where he's paying attention to all these things. He's having second second thought. He's having doubts about like maybe I, you know maybe I, maybe I, you know maybe I, maybe I was a little too harsh. Maybe I shouldn't be maybe I shouldn't be decapitating people. Maybe you know. <laughs> It's just one of those things where it's like maybe just maybe I should just take it easy on the decapitating the, the decapitations and you know putting people on pikes you know maybe I should do that a lot less maybe I'll get Shina's attention. So it's, it's mm -hmm. uh, but the the one that was more uh, the one that the part like I said like the part that I just love is like he's hearing Sayo's name all over the place. He's the, and like I said like I'm like he, any any other time I I like even I would have been like I would have snapped. But he kept his composure and you can tell it's like he's having like these second you can doubt you can see the doubt in his mind. And I find that the most fascinating. Like I said, I thought this—I thought this episode was so boring when it was growing up. But now that I'm watching this again, I—I I fell in love with this episode because, like, just the fact that like they did so, they did, they did, like it compared to what we saw with the CGI show, where it's like bam, 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 bam things a minute. It's very good to see something that they took effort, and not just that they—they they took their time and effort and actually paid it off really well, more so than more so than more so than in other media. I yeah. will say that um, they actually, I think, I can't tell if it was the exact same shot or if they just animated it really similarly. It was probably the exact, exact same shot, though. There was, like, two different times where, like, Cassius reached out like he was going to take her mask off in her sleep. Mm -hmm. And it was giving me real uh, End of Evangelion vibes. In a oh, no! Oh, no! You guys know the scene I'm talking about. We don't have yes, to say it out loud. Nope. But it was Come giving on, me moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. It was like, nope, mm -mm -mm. Nope. Okay, so uh, I, I get, I mean, any final thoughts on, on it, Bankos? <laughs> yes, uh, I just have to say, despite the fact that I really, I absolutely lo love that fact about this episode, he did an amazing job with Cassius uh, developing, he, developing him. Because Cassius is one actually one of those characters that when you ask most people, they, they actually generally feel like, ah, yeah, Cassius dying is one of those sad moments in Saint Seiya. Because you get to care for the character, despite the fact that he was an antagonist in a way, and despite the fact that he only appears like uh, in the beginning and until this point, but they were able to to convey that extremely well. But there is one scene that, unfortunately, like I think it's much better in in the manga than it is in the anime, and it is the face of Ayoria once he awakens to the, the evilness of the Genro Maoken. Uh huh. I just posted the the. Well, I'm posting the picture in 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 the Discord so you can get, so you can look at it and know what I'm talking. Oh about. whoa 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 whoa! That is a that is a pissed off that is a pissed off hombre. Yeah, I mean the the anime also did a good job at portraying him as as becoming evil. But here you 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 would shit your pants if you saw somebody with yeah. that face. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I have a lot I'm, of better like memes. <laughs> yeah, feel free to use that at your at your disposal. But yeah, that's the only thing. I love this episode. Conrad, Conrad, your final thoughts. I, anytime I can see more Cassius, 
I'm all for it. Even in the CGI show, I pretty I like Cassius. I like his design, his character design. Um, it is the the archetypal type of character, like the very large, you know, kind of beefhead, not super smart kind of character that I always tend to love in anime. And so, of course, I really liked him a lot. Um, and it was great to see him on screen more. It's it's sad. No, like th this episode makes what happens later like like Ben has said it makes what happens later so much more impactful and i feel like it's almost even more impactful watching it after you know what's going to happen i mean of course you don't want spoilers your first time through but now that we can go back and we can see where like why they were trying to make him relevant again after like 40 episodes of not seeing him just it it seems i don't know it, it um it shows that they weren't just going to throw him in there to be the sacrificial lamb, metaphorically, without reason, just if that makes sense. Like, it, it gives him a reason to be where he is and do what he does when he does it. And it gives it impact because they slowed down, unlike, unlike the CGI show, they slowed down to give us these quiet, simple character moments between him and Shina to show because we we kind of got the the idea from before that he really cared about her but now we see that he loves her like he he whether it's like a romantic love or just like you know like this this is somebody that he wants to protect with all of his heart kind of love and he reaches the decision at the end of this episode that if he doesn't go and try to save Saya, then Shina's going to go and Shina's like mortally wounded at this point and will most likely die so he's basically throwing himself in front of a gun for her. And I just think that's, I think it's cute. And it, it fits in with his character development. And it's, I, it was, it was a really, really good episode. Okay. So any final thoughts on these group of episodes, Power Rider Furry? Um, these, it, it was nice to get back to the original show. The CGI show, we harp on it a lot. We make jokes. Oh, it's bad. But the second season, they vastly improved it. Hell, even like the middle episodes of season one, I can tell that they were trying to course correct some of that stuff. But I, I, Ben Haas put it best with when it's the music, and that was, you know, I, I was, I, I watched the show. I, I watched the block of episodes that we review for the show fairly close to when we record because I want to have my like freshest takes and my have it be fresh on my mind. And my notes will make more sense because sometimes I just write stuff like uh, one of my notes says Cassia said no wait mommy and I don't know what, if we, if I'd waited a week I might not have remembered what that meant but it's whatever she was trying to leave <laughs> and he was stopping oh. her he decided to go he's like no mommy no <laughs> but um <laughs> oh uh, god mommy sorry mommy sorry um but anyway but the, so but the 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 music just ties everything together in this nice bow. And it, so many pieces, like, I don't, I, I, if you were to tell me, you know, what's your favorite piece of St. Sam music? I mean, other than like the classic atonal moaning lady <laughs> track that they play a lot, a lot of it doesn't pop into my head, but because I'm just not like a soundtrack kind of person, like that's not something that I focus on a lot. But because because of the experience of being on this podcast and hearing two other people's you know that are passionate about the show's opinions about the CGI episodes, now going back and kind of translating that information that I've received into the the main series, I see it. Well, I hear it. I I, I hear the music, and it's not that I've never paid attention to it before, but now I'm paying attention to how it really sets the tone for every single one of the scenes so perfectly, and how it impacts and it really drives everything forward because there are some moments where it's just the music playing and it's just two characters like standing there intensely looking at each other and things like that but the music makes it feel intense or makes it feel ethereal depending on you know what vibe they're going for and it just encapsulates it so well so i'm so glad to be back to the original series uh i'm very very happy to uh be resuming this and to really now be able to directly compare because this is the episodes that we're talking about now we just recently watched the cgi counterpart so it, it we can see the direct difference in real time now too so that was pretty interesting but these are some of the most iconic episodes of the show there's some of the episodes that when you ask fans of the show 
you know, what they think the big pivotal moments are in the show, the, these couple of fights, the Death Mass fight and the Leo Iodia fight are two of the biggest ones from this arc. So I, yeah. I'm super excited that we're finally here. Um, any final thoughts on these block of episodes? Thank us. For the, uh, like, it's it's weird for me because like I think that in in a way I have taken taken for granted uh, the the anime. Uh, like it, it's always been there for me, and like it, it, I have the fortune of saying that I have access to it in many ways. Both like I, I have access to to, to seeing it any time that I, that I want, and I've seen it so many times throughout the years that sometimes you kind of like just see it by 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 motion and you don't really sit to watch it and to actually feel what you're what you're watching uh i think that uh, this has happened to me a couple of times and now actually watching it with the intent of looking at those little details and things to criticize or things to appreciate more now i'm actually very glad that, that i'm going on this journey with you guys because it actually gives me a reason to to experience it in, in a way that i haven't before with much more attention and with much more focus and it's uh, it's great to see, like, to appreciate those things that maybe I didn't value as much before, or to discover things that I didn't had no, had noticed before. Uh, for this particular episode, like, I think the fight with Death Mask is it might not be the only moment, but it is definitely one of the moments that cemented my love for Shiryu. Like, you can see, like, like if you had to, if you ask me, like, why do you love this character? Just seeing. Seeing his development in in that fight, seeing the way that he fights, seeing his will, seeing how how he gives everything and how he cares for for the people he loves, like that's something that I, I feel very very passionate about, and that's why I relate so much to the character. Like he's the type of character that I aspire to be. Like he's like he's an inspiration to me in that regard. And coming to the Ioria fight, like you you can you get to see like that that fast paced action, and you also get to see. You get to see both elements. Like you get to see good filler and bad filler done in anime, and I I like this for blocks of episodes. Like the, the fight with Death Mask is amazing, and, and seeing Seiya and Ioria fight each other in a very dead bot battle with some uh, drama going on in the background of, of another character that you wouldn't expect it to be to be there. Now coming and taking center stage in that regard, it's it's amazing. Uh, my final thoughts is that uh, just. It, it was like you know, like you guys said it best. It's like it's great to be back to watching the old series, going back to like you know, going back to some pacing thing, going back to like more sane pacing instead of just insane going at a million miles per hour pacing like we had with the CGI series where they were looks like they were racing to the end. It's interesting to see where we are, like you know, with them taking their time. As a matter of fact, they had enough time so they can actually put in two fillers, and these two fillers went to in very different directions. You have one that went. I went to a weird direction, and then another that just went into the kind of direction that we're going to see a lot more going forward with stuff like the Asgard series, where you where they take where they take their time and actually like develop what's going on a little bit better. And it's something it's something that I that uh, that I really do appreciate about the series is that we get these that like these you get to see these character moments and get you know we get to see like these characters that we don't really get much of from like the from the manga. And we get to see a little bit more in depth. And like I said, we're dubbing like we're dubbing aside. I really, really, I really love these episodes, these block of episodes. Yeah, and it was really refreshing going back to the series. Like I said, we're no, no, no disrespect to to the, to the CGI show. Again, if if there's ever like the most improved um Saint Seiya thing, if there's a reward for that, it's it's for that series. It's like it got the, it got the most improved award. Where it's like you know you're not quite there yet, but you're doing better. You know you get you get you get a head you, you get a pat on the shoulder. You know good job, good job. A C, a, a, a solid C or like a seven or like a, or a grade seven if you're in Mexico. You're <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. You're doing good. You're not the best, but you're good. But it's good to see like you know we got to see both extremes of like what, how you can do how you can do things right, and you, we got the extreme of like how you do things wrong with. With the, with the filler arc, with the filler stuff with Marin, but then you get this incredible, like just these this, this incredible sequence of with uh, with Cassios. And, you know, a lot of times it's not it's he's not really act he's not really participating. A lot of times he's thinking, or like a lot of times he's very quiet. And he, it's just him, like you, you can tell, like through like he's he, he's not saying there's no internal dialogue, no like there, there's the only tell sign you have is just the animation. Even the animation, you can tell like he just like. He has this look of like I don't know if I should tell her or not, or I don't know what I should do this, or I should do that. I don't know. There's doubt. You can see a lot of doubt in his in his eyes, his actions, his and everything else. It's really, really good. It's those subtle things that 
you don't get when you're watching it as a kid, but now you're, you're watching it as an adult with a more critical eye, you get to see and you get to appreciate so much more. Solid group of episodes. I'm really, like, you know, I can't say that, like, again, I, like, we have our complaints, again, and some of those complaints is, like, more towards the fact that, like, god damn, like, why, why did this ill got Sight have this weird dub? But on that aside, that, that aside, I, I, I really enjoyed these episodes. So any last thoughts, gentlemen, on anything you want to discuss before we head out? Uh, no, just that uh, these, these were very solid, despite some of its mishaps, and uh, looking forward to the next batch. All right. Furry, any final thoughts or head empty? Next, on next topic. <laughs> um, uh, good. Good. All right. Good. Me, good. me good like job. good. Me like good things. Good job. What, good job. What was Golf that? Go clap. Go clap. Oh. Go clap. Go clap. That Go is clap. not what that sounded like. <laughs> 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 that's the, that's the oh no! Going forward. <laughs> yeah, but no. Okay, I was just making a golf clap. I was making a golf clap, ladies and gentlemen. Just for the record, just like you know, just like if they like just uh, just go on my ass. I was doing a golf clap, just like that little thing where it's just like I have my. I'm just clapping very lightly in my palm. For no more, of, no less. For the sake of iTunes not flagging us as adult content, <laughs> that was a golf clap. Yes. <sighs> Well, we needed. I needed that. I needed that last minute. That, that last <laughs> bit of liberty. That was. That was good. That was good for you. That was good. That was good. That was good. All righty then, folks. We can. We we have to call it quits here for this episode. But before we go, we have to show our wares. Megas, you you must go first, my friend. What do you have to show for us? All right. Uh, if, if you're interested in uh, me sharing a lot of Sensei fan art stuff, trivia that I find, so occasionally I put uh, anime to manga comparisons as well as uh, some some crazy ideas that I, that I get. Uh, you can follow me in my Twitter, which is uh, at MexicanGeek502. I also have an Instagram account, which is uh, my username is uh, CraterisBenges, uh, where I publish. I'm gonna start publishing my illustrations. I have one finished so far. For Saint Seiya, I'm actually working. I started working on another one. Hopefully, I'll finish it before the month ends. But I'll try to hurry it up as much as I can. The, no pressure. Please, please look forward to that. And I'm also working on something that I, I hope that I can finally announce on the last episode of November. Uh, hopefully, I can actually give more details by by now. I'll I'll, give, I'll work my ass so that I can actually reveal what it is. Uh, but until then, just uh, I'll keep you posted. Thank you. All right, all right. If whenever, if that pops up beforehand, you know we'll we'll post it on our Twitter. Come on, furry. Okay. Don't say you don't have. Don't say you don't have anything you want to. You have to promote. You have stuff to promote. So, so go so at it. Go at it. All, um, I I will type. I I want you to leave for just a moment, Ramsey. Take your headset off, and I will type in the chat when I'm done spoiling. Because just so everyone knows, Ramsey doesn't want to be spoiled who the next guest on Ancient Anime is. But I would like to formally announce it. Okay, I'm just going to assume that he's not listening. So you can follow Ancient Anime, uh, my podcast, at Ancient Anime on both Twitter and Instagram. Our next episode, which will be next Monday, which is the 14th, I believe. Yes. So next Monday, the 14th, I'm actually having my first celebrity guest. I am having Astrid Aurelia from Dragula Titans, currently airing on Dragula Titans right now. Uh, is going to be joining me to talk about Pokemon, the second movie. I am so freaking pumped. Um, Astrid is a really big deal. She is making, uh, uh, she was very famous on season four of Dragula, um, which is a drag competition, um, horror themed drag competition. She was really famous on there for having a realistic um, xenomorph costume in the season that she's on. And now that she's back, she is very much representing the furry community. So that's how we really hit it off. Super personal person, love her so much. Ramses, you can come back. Why, 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 who? <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so that's that's about ancient anime. Um, I'm also going to be doing something coming up soon, but I think that you might want to hear that from Ramses. So I'll just end on follow me on Twitter or else I'll cry because I'm fragile at Common Rider Furry. Yes, you you need to see all of his collection of of of, of, <laughs> um, of Monster High of Monster High dolls, which is the point where like I don't collect those, but these are cool. These are cool looking dolls. I kind of want to buy some of these. They're nice. They're they're not the highest quality dolls. I would say probably the highest quality dolls that are on the market right now are Rainbow High, but Monster High is definitely the most unique. And yeah, um, this reboot that they've done, while they've made a well, they made it a bit more kid friendly than it used to be. It used to be a little bit edgier. Um, it, it's 
it's still really good and it has a lot of lgbt representation in it nice um, there's actually a non-binary character one of the main characters frankie is now non-binary which makes it oh okay they're frankenstein's they're they're based off of frankenstein's monster so they're made up of parts of both men and women so oh, it makes interesting. sense that they wouldn't be they wouldn't be one gender or the other yeah um, that makes sense yeah but it, it's got a lot of cool stuff the cartoon just started but the new i really like the new designs and i've Definitely been posting a lot of those on my Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, and I definitely didn't forget that uh, Ancient Anime has an Instagram either. And I didn't definitely just start posting on there again today after like two months. That's fine. That is perfectly <laughs> fine. You're doing. You're good. You you you're a man. You're a person that's really busy with doing things because you're going to be busy with what I'm about to announce as well. Well, first things first. I need to also announce that I also host another podcast called The Saturday Morning Squadron. This week we had we were, it was just me and Rob. We discussed um, just bad video games. We went off for like almost three hours talking about like bad video games in general, and it was a fascinating discussion because like because like it was one of the discussions where it's like like you know we we like it was good it was good to not only discuss it but also like trying to figure out like why was this bad in the first place? And you know like as I always said like there's no there's no no companies out there making bad video games unless you're unless you're a microcomputer company. Trying to make something at like the eleventh hour, then you are. God damn, God, God damn, you should all see. You should all see videos from like people that are in Europe that can tell you stories about like companies that are trying to try to hoodwink everybody on games that they had to develop at the eleventh hour because reasons. I was about to say if if it, uh, if it was a movie tie-in game, then it was almost always done with no budget and with like negative ten days to complete it. Oh, we, we there was a, we had a fascinating discussion about 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 one of the, on one particular game, Dick Traces for the Nintendo for the NES. Like we just we, we we dissected the games. Like what went wrong here? And we said like, look, there's there's good ideas here, but they just like because I, I'm pretty sure they had to make arbitrary like time frame. So like, okay, we need to get this we need to get this game out just before the movie. If they had like at least a year or two more to polish it up, it would have been a, it actually would have been halfway decent. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's a, that's another reason why it's like. Game, another game that we were like, okay, this could have been a decent game if you would have given it a little bit more time. Was was another infamous one called Total Recall. That's a game that's really infamous one on the Nintendo. And we're like, this game is like, like the there's things in the skeleton that's good, but it didn't, but it didn't just, it didn't jive well. And if you only had like a couple more years in the in the, if I had only more a couple more years, it would have been actually decent, mm -hmm. not the best, decent. Um, but yeah, we went. We had a lot. Of, we had a lot of discussions about like about the, about that kind of about those things. Our next episode is going to be just me and Rob again, unless we can find someone we can wrangle up about so, about this. But we are taking a look at um, uh, Black Panther Two: Wakanda Forever because it looks really awesome. It's coming out next week, and I cannot wait. I might also have a review for the One Piece film Red because I'm also watching it at the same time. So you, you might get like a, you might get a double review from me at least. And you can find that at sadamsquad.tumblr.com. Uh, uh, Again, the address is sadamsquad.tumblr.com. That's where we have our archive to our. That's where we have the archive to all of our episodes and like just you know more information about how you can how you can like listen to the show in, as well. Also, I'm here to announce this. And you may have already saw you may have already saw this on Twitter, but we have another podcast coming in 2023. Um, this was something that the idea of it was. Implemented by our former host that was on the show previously, and it was something that I've been just been mulling around for like the last six, seven months now. And because of that, like, like me and me and Conrad Furry and a couple other people as well, we've been like back and forth on this. And I decided, you know, as I'm streamlining the the, the editing on the, on this show, and also on the uh, on the also on the Saturday Morning Squadron, I have enough time also to put in yet another podcast in my plate. So. I am here to formally announce uh, me and Comrade Furry are hosting a show called Sailor Moon Says. Yes, we're finally going to do a Sailor Moon podcast. We're going to do a Sailor Moon podcast based on the deke dub of Sailor Moon. Uh, it's going to be a wild ride. I really hope that all of you guys will, will participate. We're going to put, we have already kind of already said, like, you know, maybe we're going to want to do like an, a, 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 like an additional episode before 2023, which is going to be our, date, our launch date. Oh, just something really quick that we're going to put up just so you can give you guys a little, a little taste of what, what to expect from us. And that will be on our Saturday AM Squad feed when it, when it goes up. So be on the lookout on that feed when that goes up. Also, pay attention to the Twitter. I'm, I'm going to post it as well, pending, pending, pending the apocalypse on Twitter. If you want to find... What on? Oh, oh, no, I was just going to say, and I... Um, 
like how how Benhas is so methodical and like has this art like archive of knowledge about Saint Seiya. That's me with Sailor Moon. So I think this is gonna be much more of my inane behind the scenes factoid rambling. Oh yeah, and trust me, trust me. I, I'll tell you this right now. Thanks to the responses from a lot of people, we then you know I want to express if I start bringing other people as well, and like trust me, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So. A lot, a lot, so a lot of people are shockingly really well, were really down with the idea, especially when I pitched the idea to a lot of people who are like, why, is this, why are you making a double of this? Why are you making a podcast about this? Well, look, look, I'm going to say this right now, that, and I'll preface this also on the show when we start proper. Sailor Moon, like, you know, you know, as much as I love Saint Seiya, as much as I love talking about all other stuff on, on, the, on the Saturday Game Squad, Sailor Moon, what I like is that, you know, it's like, those people that grew up on that, that grew up on it, that were like, Eight to eight to thirteen year olds growing up, they're they're now adults now, and I was at that age where I was was kind of impressionable to that kind of series, and you know yeah they're pretty girls, <laughs> but I I fell in love with the series in its design, and like I said I always said that Saint Seiya and and Sailor Moon kind of like conjoined the hip whether they like it or not, <laughs> even though it's like they're like they're vastly different they were made in different times and stuff like that, but it was thanks to my love for Saint Seiya that I was I got into the Sailor Moon. So I was like, you know, it's it's sort of like a complimentary podcast to what we're doing. Like I said, I'm really happy to get Comrade Frey, who's an expert on all of this. You know, it was something like, you know, we always you always hear the joke that you know, take a drink whenever we mention Sailor Moon, <laughs> and <laughs> no, you're I don't I don't blame you either. But it's you know, it's it's great to finally have a venue where we can discuss all this, and you know, it's great to have Comrade Frey on board with this, and also like you know, hey, we're we're gonna have it's gonna be a great time. It's a it's a silly it's a silly dub, but the thing is. We want people to join in on the silliness because, like, we want to appreciate because, like, we can appreciate the series for like we can appreciate the actual series for being what it is. And it's a great series overall, but we want to we want people to join us. Like I said, we want to extend the pop tart to the fandom that that was kind of that was kind of jaded by the by that dub, or people that were unknown of, who who had no idea about this dub. We want to give you that pop tart, you know, nice and fresh, and give it to you on a plate and ask you like you know enjoy it with us. <laughs> If you know if if you know what I'm talking about, guys, you're 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 in the right place on this next on my new podcast. <laughs> you're on the you're definitely in the right place. As far as this podcast goes, you can find out you can find out more about the podcast at stcosmocast.com. Again, the address at stcosmocast.com. Um, I won't give you that whole spiel that I said before because one cover I gave me gonna give you guff for it, and two I figured out, <laughs> two I figured out that like, yeah the WWE does apply on it. So like the first one I put up the when I got the when I got the website, the www.scosmocast.com wasn't working, but then I got it. And I'm like, yay! So yeah, like if you well, again, it's at scosmocast.com, www.cosmocast.com. You can find out more information about the show. You can find out well, you can see all our social media links. You can. Listen to the show on the website, and you can find out more about who we are and what we do as well. So, with all that said, gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. I am Ramses for Comrade Furry and for Bankos. I'm here to tell you all that to keep burning that cosmos. I'll see y'all next time. Bye! Bye! Bye-bye!